Washington Outdoors Bassmaster Elite at Ross Barnett. Being brought to you live by Lowrance. Bassmaster Live, our midday breather is over. A little shorter version this time around. But that hour is done and ready for the last three hours of our broadcast. Last three hours of our tournament here on Ross Barnett. Let's take a look. Our lay, lay of the lake, our hummingbird lay of the lake, just to show you where our anglers are right now. Take note of where Mark Menendez is. He's certainly become a part of the story right now up in there in the Tallahassee Bay area with Matt Heron. Everyone else has got to go up the lake, got to go up past the bridge pretty much, or most of that way anyhow to find the rest of our anglers. All of the fish seem to be caught right by the dam or on up. I don't think we've had a camera on anyone all week, mid lake. No. Certainly not on the east side. The lower third hasn't, hasn't played at all. Bobby Lane having a good day out there. One of our top stringers so far, our top limits so far today, along with Mark Menendez. We'll get all of that in for you. Our unofficial scoring as per Bass Track a little bit later on. Keith Fauché, who started the day in second place, fishing these backwaters just north of the bridge there, up, uh, north of Mid Lake in the upper third of Ross Barnett here. And, Trying to get a limit in the boat right there. He's found the uh, the fish very few and far between. However, Kevin Van Dam didn't find him few and far between this morning at all. He opened up with a uh, quick four fish and then filled out his limit a little bit later on. Yep, he did. He actually caught the fifth one, but because of a mishap yesterday, had a fish that died on him. He couldn't call. He hooked one that he was a little nervous about. It might. He, it might die on him, and he threw it back, and it took a long time to catch that fifth one. I think maybe he was second-guessing himself. Yeah, he really did. Way up the lake is where we find, uh, of course, the man who started our, uh, the day with the lead, and these two anglers right here. Yep, they're, they're way up there, and then we got Ishmael Rodas up farther than those two guys. He's worked his way up, but a lot of fish being caught up in this river, right where it next comes out into the lake itself. Oh, no, no, I misspoke. Way on up there is our <laughs> leader coming into today, and he's been spending all his time up in the river. Thankfully for him and a couple others, we didn't get the forecasted rain of four or five inches. They only had an inch of rain, so it's been good fishing up there for him today so far. A little slow post-frontal, but he said he was saving his best stuff for the time that they bite, and that's been in the afternoon for him. We were expecting a, a really high Pearl River, high and rolling Pearl River, and of course we didn't get the rain, as you say, that was expected, so that's worked in the favor of our leader into this day for Dustin Connell. Let's take a look at two, a few of our statistics here. Day one, the number of limits, boy, it's uh, you know pretty close. Day one and two, of course, we had a half field, so it's right, right it, about on track with that for day number three as well. The weights tracking day to day. We haven't had a, a great attrition of, of fish catching one day to another here. Ross Barnett has held up, held up a little bit better than people might have expected. It has. It's incredible to look at those numbers. That's that's great stuff to look at. It's it's been very consistent for all three days, <laughs> with all the weather changes and all all the wind and dirtying up a lot of water it's incredible the fishing has been pretty well got some pretty good fishermen out there doing that's that's part of it yeah, too. Oh yeah. <laughs> some guys who uh, know a few tricks they've uh, seen a thing or two as they say on the commercial glad you're back with us monday hey lunchtime good time to join in and see what we got going here lunchtime for folks on the east coast getting there getting there for folks in the central time zone Take a look at our Toyota Midday Report, and we have to start with uh, what happened in the first hour of fishing here with Kevin Van Dam, Davey. One thing about Kevin, he changes changes baits, changes everything really, really often. We saw some guys stick with a topwater frog and even topwater walking baits this morning, and it didn't work out. You see Kevin lay that frog down, and he picked up, he caught his fish on a jerk bait, a swim jig, and boy, when he gets in the right spot, really set up where these fish are relating to the current and the water clarity, then it's like back-to-back -back cast. He he catches them grouped up and schooled up, and that's certainly what you want to do. And Kevin Van Dam responsible for half of those eight fish caught in the first hour of fishing today. Not about the same number caught in the second by all 12 anglers. The by far the most productive period all 8:15 to 9:15. A little bit of a tapering off of production from 9:15 until 10:15 a.m. 11 o'clock local time here. Ridgeland, Mississippi, our host city, and Ross Barnett, first time ever on Ross Barnett for our anglers. The good news is I think the slowest part of the day that would have been this morning early with these bluebird skies for the first day and, and quite a few, and the cooler morning, 30 degrees cooler than it was just mm. a few days ago at daylight, so hopefully the fishing will get better and better as the day goes on. You saw it go to 16 fish, back down to 10, but 
I think it'll go back up this afternoon. And here's Dustin Connell. Fishing the same area in which he really knocked their lights out on day number three of this tournament here. He's got a lot of specific spots that he's uh, he's not wasting any time. He's he's going and checking them out one by one, ticking them off the list. That's that's his obvious strategy for today. It seems like he had just specific spots and they were they were scattered out a mile or two apart up north in the river. <clears throat> Excuse me, but but down lower in the river where he's been catching his better fish and he's been catching them up in the day like like it is now until way in he's got stretches where i think he fishes specific targets that, that he has multiple targets through 100 yards of, of river bank and he'll move to the other side and fish 100 yards but i don't think we'll see him jumping around with his with his outboard as much this afternoon as we were seeing up there this morning. okay all right and one thing i had on my mind during the break he was going to his place that he said he felt confident he'd get some bites and catch him a spotted bass like the big one he caught on day three and we haven't seen his numbers chain on bass track, so maybe those spotted bass didn't cooperate with him while we were gone. Yeah, we still got him stuck at three keepers in the live well for four pounds and 13 ounces. That's allowed Kevin Van Dam, Mark Menendez, and this man right here, Jonathan Van Dam, to move ahead of him, at least for the time being, on top of that leaderboard. Jonathan Van Dam with his five fish limit and 11 and a half pounds. He knows, Menendez knows, Van Dam knows they're all going to have to upgrade pretty well. Tommy Sanders, Davey Hyde back here in the Toyota Bassmaster Studios for our last three hours of Bassmaster Live. We couldn't do it without the Sooch and Ron Moore. The Sooch. I know you guys have been cranking on try, trying to chisel out something for us during the one hour break there. What's the what's the production been? Oh, the folks on Twitter are asking, boy, they're, they're really pinpointing it that a big fish is probably going to make the big difference in this event. The afternoon five pounder gonna gonna do it for somebody okay. just the question is who yeah they are right already we've seen that mark menendez jumping from off the you know off the leaderboard so to say up into the second spot a four and a half pounder um and he's got a two and a half a two and then two that are smaller than that in his live well so he's got a lot of room to move up if he catches another one of those he'll be right at that weight that he probably needs to to put his name in the hat so a lot of jumping we talked about it on facebook live i think uh Davey, we expect that the, the final three hours with the sun, it should warm up that flipping bite for Keith Poche as well as Dustin Connell. Yep. I think anyone in the field to have a legitimate chance to win this event other than Dustin Connell will have to catch a four pounder plus this afternoon. Oh, I Dustin, if he fills out his limit, he might be just fine with you know two more two pounders. But one of these other guys is going to have to catch a good quality fish and We've got a star-studded bunch that certainly knows how to do that. I think we'd all agree with Zona. We asked him how much it would take any of these guys to play with Connell by the end of the day, and he said you've got to be in that 17, 18-pound range minimum. Yep. There's Keith Poche still trying to get something ignited here on this final day. Boy, our coverage is starting to look a little raggedy here for having such a great week, but uh, sometimes it does that at midday. Sometimes the wind gets to blowing, and we... We get our cell, t cell towers covered up a little bit by uh, obstructions, but uh, it'll be back. We'll be there. It's, it's, it's great to have perfect service, but if we just get those pictures and a few, it lets us know what's going on. Hey, it sometimes they just kind of turn into a gallery, and sometimes that's fine. Yep. It just shows how many. Oh, oh, we've got one on. Yes! Yes! Oh, that's what I'm talking about, baby. Hey, we ain't quitting. Biggin. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, me. Oh, she could have come off. Dude, I seen it in her mouth. She could have came off. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Lord. Biggin. 
That's why I keep doing this. Yes. One more like that, baby. One more. Yes. Four and a half pounder. Dude, she was hung on the mat. She was hung on. Just, right the, just we, the spot. Yep. Just the spot. That, that's a perfect oh. picture of what he's been really focusing on right. in the afternoon, especially. And as I was saying, someone other than Dustin had to catch a four plus pounder to have a chance. Well, when he catches those God. that size, it makes it really tough on everyone else. Really, everyone else has got to pick up their game now. And he's right. Any one more like that. Yeah, it's over. I don't know if it'll take one more like that. One more keeper, it might be over, but <laughs> it could be. I don't like he said. I don't think he's quitting until quitting time. That's for sure. No matter how many, but yeah, you heard him say. That's why I keep doing this. That's uh, yeah. It'll take him over sixty-one pounds and a nice little four-pound plus lead. Yeah, put my some great stuff from Dustin Connell, and uh, we're lucky to get that picture. I'll oh, tell that's you right, right now, and that's man, great. I feel. Privileged to have seen that, which may be the big time turning point of this final day. Dustin Connell coming from three, three fish in the live well, two to a limit. And that one, every bit of it goes right to his bottom line. It's going to make him harder and harder to defeat this rookie, getting closer and closer to nailing down this win here. Another thing I noticed, Tommy, he's a rookie. We covered John Murray, a 20-plus year veteran at Toledo Bend. Didn't quite hear the, the breathing as much as John Murray there, but even at this age, boy, it's exciting. He's young. He's in shape. He's, but, boy, it's just yeah. it's an adrenaline rush. I'm saying there's some shaking going on there. <laughs> a la John Murray. Let's listen. One more Let's time. Say Talking about baby. Hey, we ain't quitting. Biggin. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh me. Oh, she could have come off. Dude, I seen it in her mouth. She could have came off. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Lord. Biggin'. Yes. That's why I keep doing this. Yes. One more like that, baby. One more. Yes. Logged as a four and a half. Yeah, he called it. He said four and a half. Four and a half day, pounder. And he just said it right there, four and a half pounder. Dude, she was hung on the mat. She was hung on. All right. Well, everything you talked about, David, the bright sun up ahead, tied to that heavy-duty mat right there adjacent to the current. Man, that's, that's, the, that's the formula for Dustin Connell, obviously. It's been a perfect setup for him to the final day to avoid the rain like he was. We were all blessed not to, to be yeah. washed out with four or five inches of rain and flooding conditions. But this high pressure, you just knew it was a matter of time before he was going to get that bite. And he got it, and he capitalized on it. He was right up in there i thought he was going to jump in after that fish he certainly would have probably but he was able to get his hand on it and mm. everything worked out great he will not forget that fish for the entirety of his career that's for sure 
Here's a couple of guys who don't know it yet, but they, they've really got the onus on them now. Kevin Van Dam, Keith Poche. One thing if you want to notice, all day we've had five hours of action, and there's been three four-pounders caught all day, and two of them in the last 30 minutes. Oh, good. Good, good. Maybe we'll see a few more, maybe even a six-pounder or so. Well, I had Chris Aldane on here a couple of days ago saying, hey, there's a 10-pounder that lives in here. Yeah, and Alfred Williams, the Dave Mercer, Talk with said just a few weeks ago, someone weighed in a nine plus. I saw that picture of that nine right there on the on the uh, on the deck. Boy, that would be a game changer. Oh, yeah. It does. Looks like Keith Poche staying close to the shoreline like he's he's done all day. All with day him, long, isn't? absolutely. Okay. Jonathan Van Dam. The Van Dam seem to be fishing just off the shoreline, looking for a little contour changes. It's just so amazing to me now that I'm able to see all this from the other side of the desk, so to speak, how you have four or five guys, you know, your Apple of Five live, and they can all five be doing totally different things, but obviously having great events and being here on Sunday with a chance to win. It's, you can learn so much. There's usually multiple patterns that, that are equally good. The key is being able to catch one like Canale just did. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's so much more fun to watch this rather than sort of a, a uniform thing out there. Cherokee was fun, but the scene, the, uh, the action yeah. did not change. <laughs> Some good fish catching, though. Yep. Whoever says bass fish is not an athletic action sport, I mean, Dustin Connell basically jumped out of the boat for that one. He'd probably do it again, sure too, if he got oh, another yeah. one right this second. I think any of our top 12 would have done the same thing. If, <laughs> Absolutely. If they were able to get a fish on and get them caught up like that, because so many times when you see that happen, the fish just barely gets away from arm's reach. So. Great for him. He got his hands on it. We've had in the last hour, I just mentioned those two four pounders in the last hour from when we went to break to right now, there's been nine fish caught. Over half of them are over three pounds. So wow. that by far probably, even though it's only nine catches, by far the best quality hour we've had on this final day. Picking up. We watched that footage of uh, Dustin Connell catching that big spotted bass, sort of an unexpected bonus yesterday on day three and he said you know what sometimes when it's your time it may be your time and it's it's starting to look a little more like that now as we head into the final three hours of fishing i certainly agree with that when it's when it's your time you it's hard to mess it up but he hasn't messed it up I, from what i've seen him do he's he's fishing really really good like I say for like someone with a lot more even though i know he's from the area he's from and the college series he's got a lot of experience but at such a young age he's certainly fishing like somebody that's 10 10 or 20 years older than he is mm -hmm. Of all the people I talked to this week, 
Jonathan has been catching more numbers. He said a lot of them were small, but he's been catching a lot of fish. And he said, I can go on a little dry spell and then pull up to one of my depressions or, mm -hmm. or little ditches that, that I found some fish lots shed around. And he said, sometimes just during the day, not necessarily early or late, but it just a lot of when he hits them right, it can catch 20 off one place. If you're just joining us, it's really a as Davey says, lots of, lots of different strategies at play here. The, both the Van Dams uh, key in on these very subtle little, little depth changes in these, in these larger areas here. and Trying to work along those lines as, as best they can. The unseen hard lines, you might say. Yep. And at the bottom left there, you see that's, that's what Kevin and Jonathan are using. To, instead of the shoreline, like it's a great picture right here. You see what what most of us do, or what what I did for most of my career is on a shallow vegetation, dirty water place. You follow the shoreline or the pad line, but Kevin and Jonathan are following their their map and get on a contour line looking for these depressions. And just subtle one foot depth changes mean everything. Well, Dustin Connell doing something different. Mark Menendez doing something different yet from that. And that's our four atop the leaderboard right now. Kevin's throwing a lot of different baits. Boy, he's dialed in on the spot, but he's, he's changing up base a lot. We've seen him throw several things. Looks like he's throwing that Strike King Pure Poison right now, the vibrating jig that he likes to throw. Seen him throwing a swim jig. Let's go. Top water frog, <laughs> spinner bait. Hey, boy. Keith Pochet having a rough final day so far. Only two small keepers in the boat right now, and he's, he's about ready to Try another spot here. Johnny Van Dam on the move. Kevin with this vibrating jig. We saw just for a moment in our little quad split there, when we have four box up there, we saw another one of those hot mats, as you might say, <laughs> Dustin Connell. Yeah. No surprise, he's on another one of those right now, trying to make something happen and put this thing away. I mean, he may be young and Young and strong, but you, who needs the pressure? Who needs the anxiety? Get it <laughs> done right. early. Yeah, I think he'll feel pretty good if he catches another four-pounder. He, he should, for sure. Yesterday, Kevin Van Dam came in with a couple of flurries where he caught a, a two-pounder, three-pounder, then a four-pounder. Leads us to a question from a uh, roller derby referee in Iowa. What? Asking how many... <laughs> so uh, what? So, no, no, no. A what? <laughs> He's a roller derby referee. Love it. I don't want to say his handle name, cause, but uh, R. Ellison. How many true eight-pound giants? You know, we had the, the seven-pound, 12-ounce uh, on the on the first day from Brandon Lester and the other days we've only had five pounders be our biggest fish of the day yeah how many are in this lake you think probably not a lot eight pound plus fish but it only takes one you know they're there championship that's right monday well last year i did a story on a oh here we go I got 12 pounds i got 12 pounds maybe yeah i, I haven't had any good ones i caught a good one Three, three and a half pounder right off the bat that was tongue hooked and I was catching him really good. good and I, I, I threw him back because he was going to die and now I'm like, dang it. <laughs> oh shoot. Because <laughs> I thought I was going to really catch him, but uh, no, I, I have, I've I got mean, a couple that I need to get rid of for sure. Yeah, mine are all two and a half, two and three quarter right now. I don't, I don't even have that, so. But I don't know. I don't, I need to, I don't know where to find a good one, you know. Everything got muddy, dude. 
Even all that backwater stuff's muddy. Yeah, I know it. So, I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm just, that's what I'm hunting too. That's all muddy too. Is it? All right. Well, I'm gonna go up too. One, three fingers? Did you that one three finger? No, I, I didn't. I'm gonna go past that to that other deal. Up past there. Well, that's good stuff. There you go. Let's huddle up, guys. Family meeting. <laughs> things are things are tightening up here on Ross Barnett. That was good stuff. Enjoyed eavesdropping on that right there. That's a dangerous duo to be tag teaming Ooh. working on right there on yeah. Championship Monday. Yeah, that's right. You'd get thrown out of the ring by those two. <laughs> there we go. Uncle versus nephew right there. That's the way they stack up accomplishments-wise. Of course, who in the world is going to stack up to Kevin Van no Damme? The answer, no one. No one. Jonathan's had a great career, but you put anyone up there, their stats uh, beside Kevin Van Damme's, and it's it, it's humbling, let's say. It's not the easiest thing in the world to come out here and be Kevin Van Damme's nephew either. No, I would I'm imagine sure. the expectation would drive you nuts. Yeah, I can only imagine the, the pressure that adds to you, even though it, it shouldn't. And you, I'm sure Randy, Kevin's brother, Jonathan's dad is trying to tell him, you don't have anything to live up to, just go be yourself, and he's done a good job. But, but you can't help but be in the shadow of Kevin Van Damme a little bit. Well, Jonathan Van Damme, like Dustin Connell, not the first year, but caught, caught a win very early in his career. Green yep. Bay, Wisconsin. He proved that he was a great fisherman very early on. You're exactly Absolutely. right. Absolutely. Almost uh, took one down in uh, Harris Chain, Florida. Had a great tournament down there as well. What's Speaking of great tournament, Dustin Connell has, has really dialed in these fish up the river and catching his big fish under his mat. He's been telling us this, but we was able to get this live and what, yes. what better one catch yes. to, to mm -hmm. get on live than this one. No doubt. Oh. Honestly thought That's he was going in the river now, though. Baby. Hey, we quitting. Biggin. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Nice stuff. Dustin Connell took the lead into today. He's got the lead back in a big way, a pretty good margin right now. Almost four-pound margin ahead of Jonathan Van Dam. Mark Menendez, Kevin Van Dam, and Bobby Lane, the ones in the mix right now. You better catch them if you want to stay in the mix and be there when it's all said and done at weigh-in time. We're getting closer and closer. We'll take a break and be back. The Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Elite at Ross Barnett is brought to you by Berkeley, Hook, Humminbird, Mercury, Minn Kota, and by Nitro Boats. And it's slow today. Yep. Mom, I caught a fish. Good job, Sam. Hey, what kind of lure is that? It's a Livingston. They have electronic bait fish sounds that activate as soon as they hit the water. Easiest way to catch a fish. Hey, thanks. If you love bass fishing, then show your support by joining BASS today. Since 1968, BASS has been serving bass fishing enthusiasts with information and tournament coverage that make you a better angler. When you sign up today, you'll join over half a million outdoorsmen who love bass fishing. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Log on to Bassmaster.com to join bass today.
You know that feeling you get when you save money on parts without having to jump through any hoops, track points, or make a bunch of extra trips to the store? Yeah, that's the one. Introducing Speed Perks from Advance Auto Parts, a rewards program for guys who love getting under the hood. No cards, no points, no nonsense. You're watching the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Elite at Ross Barnett. Brought to you live by Lowrance. Bassmaster Live, we've got 30 minutes left in the third quarter of this event right here in a monster catch from Dustin Connell. Not the biggest catch of the week by the field, but monstrous in its implications yeah. for the rest of the guys in the top 12. Might be the biggest catch of the week for Dustin Connell for sure because the yeah. guys have taken the lead away yeah. from him and in one bite, one flip, he catches this four and a half pounder. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Hey, we ain't quitting. Biggin'. Biggin' for sure. Dustin Connelly, you talk about that particular maneuver right there, <laughs> getting one out of a mat like that. That's uh, He got the better part of the, the statistics on that one. I guarantee you, 75% of the time you come up empty handed, but he came up and he was just laying with the bass. <laughs> yeah, that's on the right. front deck. like they're both taking a nap right there for a second. Oh, my man. new best friend. Yeah. Oh, my she buddy. Come off. Dude, I've seen it in her mouth. She could have came off. Gosh. See, had she not, he was really hung up under there. Had she not come up to the bottom oh, of the mat, gosh. he probably would have never got his you hand had a prayer, so. would he? No. Thank you, Lord. Mm, that's good right there. Yes. Three pounds, three and three quarter pounds. Lead. That's why I keep doing this. Yes. Four and a half pounds. Goes right One to the bottom cat, line. One more baby. One more. Yes. He's on top of the leaderboard with about half the lead he started with today. But again, the thing to remember, he is, uh, he's still got one more to go for a limit, so that's huge as well. That, that actually is to his benefit, because if he catches a pound and a half, two pounder, it's gonna go in live well, it's gonna help his weight. Jonathan Van Dam in second place, and Mark Menendez in third got their limit. They're gonna have to catch one of those quality fish to, to make any move whatsoever on Dustin Connett. They probably have yeah, to catch two of those quality fish, probably, or at least have a good mid-range upgrade on every fish in their live well, because they have got some ground to make up, there's no question about that. Dustin Connell getting closer and closer being the guy who holds that trophy at the end of this thing here. We're not calling it over yet, not by a long shot, but tell me what, his odds go up. It's like those poker hands they show the odds on in the, in the Hold'em shows. His is getting more and more likely to be a winner. Other than Jonathan, you heard Jonathan and Kevin talking just a few minutes ago that the water had dirtied up. They were fishing out off the bank just a little bit in these sloughs where the water is, is probably the clearest on that whole upper end. And because that water is dirtied up a little bit, it's really hurt them. But you see Mark Menendez really coming up the leaderboard here in the last hour or two. He's fishing on the lower lake where that dirty water really hasn't affected him as much. And then I think Dustin Connell is so far up the lake that those fish are accustomed to that color water. That's every day for them. Life. Yeah. Dustin Connell, Jonathan Van Dam. Mark Menendez, all part of our Rapala 5 Live, the anglers we have cameras with, live cameras on this final day. The five out of the top 12 who were the top finishers after day number three, and Brent Chapman, very, very steady through this one right here, and a great day three, day three for Brent. He, has, he was very confident. The area that he really caught most of his fish, he was sharing with several people, Brandon Card, and there were guys catching lots of fish. I'm going to have it to myself. I expect to do well. I think the front really hurt him. Jonathan Van Dam, super steady throughout this. The only guy with 15, 15, 15 across the board. Jonathan Van Dam can get on a streak, and he's known for being able to close him when he's got a chance. He's still got a chance here today, that's for sure, but he's been so consistent. Kevin Van Dam, what can you say, man? The number one man in bass fishing with a slow start, only 11 pounds on day number one, but then he follows it up with 17 and then 18 and a half yesterday. A man on a mission, no doubt about that. I think he's gonna have to have 18 again today to have a chance. It's tough to do back to back days here. Keith Pochet, a 20 pound guy, one of those four 20 pound guys on day number one. 
really fell down. His production cut in half on day number two, but battled his way back. On day number three, 15 pounds and six ounces. He's just been grinding so hard ever since that first day. And Dustin Connell, the rookie, Alabama, Crimson Tide angler from the Carhartt College Bassmaster Series, making good his first year. It's so tough on me because I've got friends. All these guys are friends of mine, and I'm pulling for everyone. But when you see a rookie go out on the final morning, you see tears coming out from under his sunglasses, it's hard not to pull for a guy oh, like that. Absolutely. Living the dream, that is for sure. Getting a lot that's going his way early on in his career. Let's take him back out on the water and keep Poche still looking for the uh, Looking for the right combination today. Just can't get any good catches put together on this third, uh, fourth day, I should say. It looks like he's finally in the area that he, we've been seeing him every single day. And I, I guess he just finally, even though he thinks the, the water is too stirred up and got too dirty, you finally just have to go give it a shot. And hopefully it'll pay off for him here. Unseasonably cool temperatures today on our TH Marine Weather Watch. You, you get a day in May where the high temperature might might be, we might have hit it right now, 69 degrees near Jackson, Ridgeland, Mississippi. That's a cool day in May right there, and the wind is uh, still persistent. It's not going away. We're about, uh, oh, 175 miles to the east, and it's still blowing here, too. It felt heavy there. It's really incredible. Just a few mornings ago at 5.30, it was 79 degrees, and here it is midday. TH Marine current condition 69 degrees. Wow. Good stiff winds come up this afternoon and it'll likely be with them till, till time to wind them up and that is getting closer to us, just uh, less than two and a half hours away. Things are getting serious. Kevin's hooked up. Just a small one there, but keep in mind, he told us when I get a bite, it's typically a little flurry there in a small group of fish. Not necessarily small in size, but a small school of fish. Could be some little ones like that, and along with a, a four pounder. We were, before our last break, privileged to uh, listen in on a little, little meeting when he ran into uh, nephew Jonathan Van Dam there, and both of them saying, you know, hey, can't run into the big ones, can't find the big ones. Going to go up a little farther, see if we can find some better looking water. Hooked up again. Back to back cast. Come off. There's two casts in a row, he's had bites. What happens? He caught one and then he had one on for just a little bit and lost one and then another bite. That's the problem you run into fishing a jerk bait in this dirtier water that sometimes they're trying to get that bait in the mouth but it's moving and they just don't get it good and you can, you can certainly miss them. Jerk bait in shallow water, Ross Barnett and May. You wouldn't, wouldn't really have written it up that way, I don't think. He's, no, we're not on a bridge or something. We're, we're out there in a fairly shallow area. He laid that jerk bait down because he's missing some of those fish and just picked up a, I don't know if that's a swim jig or a vibrating swim jig, but one or the other. Jonathan Van Dam earlier today said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about that jerk bait. I'm worried if they're seeing it or not up there a little higher in the water column. And he actually uh, took a few tries with a, with a deeper diving crankbait to see if that. I don't think he ever got anything on that, though. I don't, I don't think so, but they're looking for cleaner water now for sure. All right. Triton on the line time as we're uh, getting closer and closer to those final two hours of fishing. Dave Mercer has been out there relentlessly following the stories for us today. And the story is the water coming out of the lake, obviously, by the look behind you, Dave. Yeah, that's right, guys. We're hanging out uh, by the spillway here. And, uh, you know, remarkably, this body of water has remained fairly stable. There's a ton of water pumping through there right now, as you can see. But 
you know, a lot of communities we go to, you're always volatile. So will they continue to generate? Uh, you know, no better depiction of that is Davies win on Pickwick, just waiting for them to start moving that water. But this community has done a incredible job to try and make sure this tournament went through without a hitch. And I got to give a shout out to the general manager of the lake, John Segman, because if you look at it, basically the highest we've had this lake all week long is 297 feet above sea level, 297.72. And the lowest it's been is 297.56. So it's pretty simple to see. There hasn't been as much fluctuation as many would have expected with the extreme storm coming in here. The lake's been working incredibly hard to keep this lake stable and to keep the fishing good for our anglers on the Bassmaster Elite Series. But uh, as we're seeing today, a bit of uh, the most overused word in professional bass fishing, a bit of a grind out there and not really shocking under bluebird, high pressure skies like this. Yeah, it is a slow, painful grind, Dave, especially for a lot of our anglers. Now, I, I should know the answer to this, but I, is this a Corps of Engineers lake or is this a local water authority or, or, or something like that? I don't know, but I, I'm, I'm thinking you know. Well, you would think I would know, but I, I'm going to go with the Corps of Engineers, and that is my Dave Mercer trivia moment of Bassmaster Live. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> Now these, these people are really, I mean, uh, Such was talking earlier about the uh, efforts that they've made through the years to turn this from a place where at a tournament like this you might win with 33 pounds to a place where you win with over 60 pounds. Such, and, uh, you pointed out one guy who was very instrumental in that, right? Yeah, sports outdoor writer for the uh, Clearing Ledger there, Bobby Cleveland. I saw an article that they uh, had him be like a go-between between the uh, Mississippi wildlife people who did pinpoint spraying to open up a lot of clogged backwater areas that improve fishing a lot. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Such. Now, you, you mentioned when we had John yesterday, uh, when we get, got started, when we started, laid out, we're not going not gonna to fish today. You told everybody that come Monday, which we're into now, today, you were going to write a note so that everyone would have full permission in order to go fishing. And Dave, my wife was listening in on that, and she's expecting to know she didn't go into work today, and she, she was expecting this. Let me read that. There's a note right there. Okay, let me read the note. Dear employer, that seems so personal right there. Unfortunately, blank, your name here, will not be able to work on Monday. He, like every other bass angler, has suddenly come down with the one-day flu. I'm sorry for walking here. I've got, I've got to see this a little bit better. Okay, the one-day flu. The only known cure is a day off to watch Bassmaster Live on Championship Monday. Good luck this season, your friend, Dave Mercer. Dave, you are all heart. You are thinking of the fan as always. Nine out of 10 doctors. I mean, I did not uh, just come up with those. Nine out of 10 doctors will tell you that the best cure for the one-day flu is a day of Bassmaster Live. <laughs> Dave, I've asked you this question before on our little live well show. This was years ago. I want to I wanna hear your best excuse, the best lie you ever told to an employer, a family member, anyone, in order to secure yourself a day of fishing? I think you stumped me on that once before. I mean, Zona had a ridiculous story and totally blew me away on that. I think his story was something like he, he wanted to go ice fishing and was so mad on the way to work that, that he literally ditched his pickup truck on purpose because, I mean, his boss would have, would have checked it out. But I'm going to say... Um, Oh, well, basically, I, I, you got me stuck. I mean, I, I, because I've never really accomplished much in my life and had a real job, I really <laughs> haven't had to come up with a lot of excuses. I think your answer involves something you told your family, how you got out of a family event to do some fishing. Now, I'll, I'll let you think on that, but uh, uh, while you think on that, Dave, I, I should point out that we've gotten notice that people are actually, in social media and so forth, are using the note. They're using the note to, to actually get permission to working? watch There's Bass, a, Bassmaster Live. We've got thank yous coming up on Twitter. Thank you, Dave. My chief wants to know who is Dave well, Mercer. Well, you're all very welcome. <laughs> He's a doctor from You're Canada. all very welcome. Hey, I, I'd like to know who their employers are because I can't believe it worked. It's working. It's working. I LA. sent one to our employer, and he said no. He said no. Our employer. Speaking of which, by the way, okay. I mean not only just Championship Monday. Got to give a special shout out 
to our good friend Mike McKinnis. It's his birthday tomorrow, so happy birthday, Mike McKinnis. Oh, I mean, yeah. for a while I was going to save it till Championship Tuesday, but it looks like we are not going to have a Championship Tuesday. Happy birthday, Mike. You're going to have a free day to celebrate with your family. Well, Dave, Mercer, thank you. We're going to do everyone, on behalf of everyone in the studio here, we're going to do everything we can to make his special day even better. <laughs> What? He's telling me something here. Here's another note. Okay, he got trumped by his note from someone else now. Let's see. Couldn't, couldn't have asked for a better day to get a rainy day at work. Okay, that has nothing to do with it. I'm, I'm not sure I understand the new. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. yes. There we go. Executive order. Wow. You know, Donald Trump sees Dave's note. He, he's got to do him one better. He says, okay, I'm, I'm going to use my creepy voice here. Every American will be allowed to watch Bassmaster Live during work hours. It is going to be tremendous. You're going to love it. It's going to be the best day you ever have. Huge. Huge. Hugely big. Okay, so that's, see, it's just going on up the chain of command right there, Dave. Good job. Excellent stuff. What else you got for us? Have you got any guests coming up this what afternoon? Are... Well, no, no, there's no guests coming up, Tommy. Everybody <laughs> left. I mean, I'm stranded on the island of misfits right now. Uh, the only guests I can, I might be able to, these guys back here are my super six. We've been watching a little <laughs> tournament here, and this gentleman right here behind me, he had the lead for a while there, but this gentleman over here just caught a, about a 20-pound uh, catfish here just moments ago. So there's actually a bigger tournament happening on this side of the spillway than there is on that side when it comes to number of anglers. Back in the day, and I can remember this, the days when you used to travel with a snagging rod, you never you never left home without it. I don't know <laughs> if you've still got it. I would go grab it right now and, and get in on that thing. See if you can pick up a little extra pocket change there. Well, the whole problem is the note that we keep talking about, it didn't work for me. I tried to get down there fishing. <laughs> I, I sent the note uh, to Bass and they told me, no, basically. But, I mean, I'm glad it's working for some people. I'm amazed, really. Well, we'll get the president's note out to you there. Maybe you can try that, and it'll, it'll work a little better than your note did. I'll get one from the prime minister. <laughs> I don't know if that'll Nobody knows work. what that is. I don't know if that will <laughs> even work with Trip Weldon. Who, who did you have to turn the note into, Trip? <laughs> Oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a long chain of people, but you trip and Mike, and it's, it's really, I mean, basically when you're at my position in Bass, you report into everybody. I, I'm pretty sure Ronnie's my boss now. I, I, whoever will give me the day off, I'll report to. There you go. Good, good policy right there. Dave Mercer, thank you so much. Great job on that note that, have, that, that has freed so many Americans to, do, to follow their passion. Uh, as, as they go about their Monday here. We've certainly enjoyed it so far. Can you tell we're having trouble getting pictures from off the water right now? We, this is stalling. a good one that we did get, though, Tommy. Yeah, we did get this one. This is worth many a replay today. Dustin Connell really making the big move of the day. Yes! Yes! Oh! That's what I'm talking about, baby. Hey, we ain't quitting. Biggin. What you call laying with the bass? <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, if you lay with dogs, you're liable to get fleas. I don't know what happens when you lay with bass. You might get a trophy or something. Or a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. I'll be laying with cash. Yeah. Oh, she could have come off. Dude, I seen it in her mouth. She could have came off. Gosh. Oh my gosh. That's got to be the power Thank pole you, replay boy. of the day, doesn't oh, it? Oh man, it's got to. We were kind of hurting for a power pole replay of the day on big on Saturday, but we got yes. no uh, no questioning about That's this one. That keep is doing the powerful this. replay of the day. Dustin Connell. Yes. Way up the Pearl River. One more like that, baby. One more. Yes. Brandon Carr's glad we got that shot yeah. on there, so we we may have to <laughs> had to resort back to to his little mishap. Yeah, well, I, I, we were a little mean on Brandon Card, I think, on that, but uh, he's a good guy, he's a good sport, and he knows it's all in the interest of good television. Dude, That's what he said. She was hung on the mat. She was hung on. All right.
Dustin Connell, a good job right there. We got a picture, not very good quality of him. It's not moving a whole lot, but. That fish gave him four for the day. Three and three quarter pound lead right now on Jonathan Van Dam. He's still, like Davey said earlier, he still has one more to add to his total. Keith Boucher on the left. And Dustin Connell on a hot tree in the shot there. <laughs> as near as I can tell from the uh, pixelated version there. Mississippi State Agency, the Pearl River Valley Water Supply District manages that, that uh -huh. dam of water from Ross Burnett. It is a water, local water authority. Okay. Now, the Corps of Engineers did study the area where to build and whatnot and gave them that info, info I'm sure, back in the 60s. Oh, my main stuff, trash, cold front, everything's muddy. One of them deals, man. It's one of them deals. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Just keep fishing. Keep wanting to go back in that little creek. I mean, that's the only place I can get bit. Oh, man. was able to get about two fish out of that creek all morning long. I bet deep down he'd rather find someplace else yes. to go if he only knew where. Davey, we often see in Florida whenever it gets cold or bluebird post frontal conditions, you want to go to the thickest, you know, bulk reed head or bulkhead or biggest match you can do and just fish it thoroughly. With a place like this where he's been catching a lot of fish on flats, are they going to really move that much, or are they just going to be harder to eat out on that flat? I think the bigger fish tend to want to move up under the, that thick vegetation, and that's why we talked about, Mark Zona brought it up this, when we were talking with him. These conditions couldn't get any better for the way that Dustin Connell has been able to catch his fish all week. And the other thing to keep in mind, we all have a target number or weight that we think we would need to to have a legitimate chance to win. And, and Dustin said this morning, 13 pounds. And Ronnie, you made a good point. He's only got four fish. He's thinking if I catch one more, especially one more four and a half pounder, but one more decent fish, three pounder or so, then that's the way he was hoping to get today. And he thought it'd be tough for anybody to catch him. It's hard to believe that none of our other 12 are doing just exactly the same thing that he is doing there, but they may be. There may be a Ish Monroe doing that yep. somewhere. We don't, we don't have a camera on Ish today. Certainly not getting the same results. If he is, he's got two fish for, well, not a bad average, but, but only two. Two fish for Chapman, two fish for Poche. Let's roll. Oh, man. Guys, crazy. Between Jonathan and Kevin Van Dam, they've caught 27 fish today. The rest of the top 12, 29 fish. Wow. Mm -hmm. So they've certainly got the quantity. They're just looking for that quality bite since they've got a bunch of two-pounders in the live well. Kevin Van Dam still working with his jerk bait out there. And this water's dirtied up. We heard Kevin and Jonathan talking to one another, saying that places that they had been catching them had dirtied up and they thought that was hurting them. This postponed time frame, it, these fish should have been coming to their pattern more and more. But because of the dirty water, the fish probably aren't moving out to those places they're tucking up to that cleaner water that's back in the vegetation.
I always think when we finish a tournament in a new spot, a new place, as, as this is for the Bassmaster Elite Series, I, it's always been my assumption that half the field says, oh man, let's not go back there again. And the other half of the field says, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all right with that place. <laughs> Am I close there? Is it, is it you're, close to that day? You're exactly right. We love the places where we catch them or do well in a tournament. And the places that we happen to not catch them, just don't figure them out or zig when you should have zagged, I don't ever want to go back there again. <laughs> 10,000 will make you like a place a lot more than zero. No doubt. I think it's been really interesting, this place. I think, of course, it's not a, not a slug fest and not a, not a big fish bonanza, but very interesting and, and like we keep harping on. I mean, the, you got to love the diversity of approaches that work here. Yep. Kevin Van Dam now sitting on 23 Bassmaster wins, the last three he added in the last season. Yeah, a lot of people were saying he was washed up. Oh yeah. And I, I, I couldn't help but chuckle when I, when I heard people saying that or asking me that question, and I said he could win one this year, and he, uh, he happened to win three. Still waiting for some better pictures, better quality pictures to come up. Our reception, the, the fishing places have changed and the reception's not been good. You can't watch this. Looks like Hulu. So Most time when you see an angler do this, he yes. comes up empty handed, but he certainly yes. didn't. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Hey, we ain't quitting. Biggin. Oh, we talked thank about you, an ladies. angler that's got a lot of diversity in his arsenal. <clears throat> the only other time we've seen him on Bass Live, he was using his electronics, fishing straight down in 30, 40 feet of water. Cherokee. And the next time we see him catching a fish out of this thick mat. Let's get a little trivia going here. Dick Supec Tires and Wheels Bassmaster Elite Series, Elite Series trivia is what I'm talking about. Which baseball Hall of Famer born in the region has a road named after him in Jackson? Thomas Cool Papa Bell. Was it Satchel Paige, Josh Gibson, or Buck Leonard? Interesting, interesting question. I'm. You got an. You got an idea? Gosh, I'm saying Josh Gibson. I'm gonna say. I think that everyone's intending to say Satchel Paige, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm go, gonna go against a. and say Josh Gibson. Take a guess. We'll be right back. Facts matter. All monofilament is not the same. Berkeley is the strongest, smoothest, most dependable monofilament line in the world. Why would you risk your fishing trip to a line that's made who knows where just to save a buck? Berkeley has been making and perfecting trialing in America for over 75 years. I spool nothing less than the best that's Berkeley trialing, and that is a fact. Champions aren't born, they're created. Every turn of the prop, every mile on the lake, every cast of the rod, every fish they catch, and every pound they weigh. It builds who they are. It builds a legacy. What is this meeting about again? Fishing! Shit. Took my boat, boom, jumped over it, and I caught a giant. It was like a whale. 29 pounds, baby! That's the last time I danced on stage. <laughs> wow. Chief fishing officer. How do I get that? I don't know. <laughs> Go to teamgtfishing.com to find out more about my real job. Is there a place where the underwater images are the clearest you've ever seen? We're seeing every fish, we're seeing every detail of structure, and where every bottom contour was visible, where whatever you wanted to see below the surface was real. Do you want to go? Structure Scan 3D is the future of fishing.
we can show you how to find fish faster and catch fish in a way you've never experienced. Lay Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Elite at Ross Barnett. Brought to you live by Lowrance. Got some fishing plenty more on the way. There's our Bassmaster Elite Series trivia brought to you by Dixie Peck Tires and Wheels. We left you with this question. Which baseball Hall of Famer born in the region has a road named after him in Jackson, the capital city of the state of Mississippi? Is it Thomas Cool Papa Bell, Leroy Satchel Page, Josh Gibson, or Buck Leonard? All of these guys in the Hall of Fame, you say, Sue? Yes, right? sir. Baseball. All of, all of them. Hall baseball, of Fame, Cooperstown. All in Cooperstown. So which one was it? My guess was uh, was uh, Josh Gibson. I'm gonna lean on my teammate here, Tommy. I'm gonna go with you. All See? Right. What do you say, cool. Ronnie? I'm gonna go Cool Papa. Cool Papa Bell. Way to go, Ronnie. Ronnie got it. Oh, I just like the name. Uh, yeah, it's a cool name. Absolutely. I'd love to give my address as 401 Cool Papa Bell Lane. <laughs> Cool Papa Bell Drive is right down the road near a baseball stadium, famous stadium there. That list there got, got included as the uh, top athletes of, of the state of Mississippi, according to Sports Illustrated. Walter Payton, Jerry Rice, Lance Allworth, actually, yeah, uh, Archie Manning, uh, Brett Favre. All right, Walter Payton. I got a Walter Payton story for you. So do I. Okay. Here's, like, here's, here's something we can't see enough, Tommy. Probably the... Not only the power pole play today, but fish of the tournament, catch of the tournament so far for sure. Yes! Yes! Whoa! That's what I'm talking about, baby! Hey! We ain't quitting! Biggin! Great, great stuff there. It's our unofficial leaderboard right now, and you see Dustin Connell certainly in the driver's seat. Just about a couple of hours left to go fishing today on Ross Barnett Reservoir. Originally Mississippi, Jonathan Van Dam, closest pursuer. Mark Menendez right behind, and Kevin Van Dam right in there as well. Bobby Lane Jr. I mean, any of these guys can catch two giants and make this one tight, but right now it's Dustin in the driver's seat. No question about that. It's surprising to me he's only got four in the live well, but. He came so close to not getting that fish in the boat because of the thick, heavy cover. Can you imagine if he, at this point, being he's a rookie, if he only had three, had he lost that fish? Such a big mental swing there. I'm excited to see the final weight. We all picked in the high 50s, low 60s, and what it'll actually turn out to be. Yeah. I think I'm already out. I think I picked 54, 55, <laughs> so I'm done. Hey, if he wants to catch a pound and a half, or I'm good. I picked 62 and three quarters, so. <laughs> Gonna be right on. I need him to Very catch close. a nice size one. Earlier today is Kevin Van Dam, who's been sort of in and out of our coverage, very sporadic all day go. long. This we didn't There's see. There's a better one it feels we like. We found it. After he had his mm -hmm. limit, but nope. still mid morning or so. Looks like he might be bigger than the one I got, but just foul hooked. We'll take a look at him compared to that one. I don't think so, though. I think that's my little one. I don't. I don't know, maybe not. Kevin throwing a jerk bait there, like he loves to do. You don't expect to see it so much in this color water right now, mm. but he and Jonathan had a little had a little secret trick going on this week that I don't think many other people even tried. Still waiting on the good pick. I'm gonna give you my Walter Payton story right now. Okay. Years ago, uh, Jerry McKinnis and I, ESPN sent us out to San Diego for the Super Bowl to take some big wigs out on a little, uh, what they call deck boat trip, you know, one of those, uh, you know, little fishing trips, reef fishing, you know, okay. out there. So we did, went out there and did that. Of course, all the hoopla around the Super Bowl. I'd never been to the Super Bowl before, all the parties and everything, and they, all the old stars of the NFL were there. But t by the time the last day gets there and it's game day, everyone's getting out. We were getting out too. We didn't have tickets to the game. They didn't, they didn't think that much of us. So we're in there and the, waiting to get on the plane. 
and the family comes in and saying they've got all their stuff with them and it's a pretty big family and and um and i uh i'm sitting next to the guy who comes in i guess he's the dad of the family and he sits next to him i didn't recognize him and he's he pulls something out of his pocket and he shows it to me and it's a two dollar bill with bill clinton's picture on it <laughs> oh my goodness and i looked down and i looked at the box at his feet and it was addressed to walter payton jackson mississippi and it was walter payton really he, he was laughing and i was laughing it was Sitting was right a, beside you. Sitting right next to me in the airport, getting ready to get on a plane and get out of there. Burt Jones, on the, all, your, all your old stars wow. are on that plane getting out of town for the Super Bowl. That's what they like to do. I guess after you've played in a few, they don't mean a whole lot to have to stay no. around and watch no, them. No. Walter Payton, always one of my favorites. Oh, sweet. Short guy. Not very tall at all. I was, that's why, one reason I didn't recognize him. Your brush with sweetness. Very nice. Well done. Well done, Suge. He didn't let me keep the $2 bill, though. I had to give it back. Did he realize you were from Arkansas? No, no, he didn't know. Davey, when Dustin Connell looks back, if he ends up winning this event, he looks back or thinks about that four and a half pounder he dug out of a mat and that, you know, he may eventually win this event. Is there a fish that all these years later, all these titles and classics and AOIs, is there one that early in your career meant the world to you now looking back like, man, that like was so big and I didn't even know it? Yes, yes, for sure. And and all these guys have the they have certain memories of ones that they were able to catch or ones that got away. And that's why I'm saying Dustin will Definitely remember that fish if it if he goes on to win this event because he knows how close. That's why he looked like he's such a panic and he d almost dove in after that fish. Of course, he couldn't leave the boat and he didn't. But he knows how close he came to, to losing that fish. It'll be one that he certainly remembers. The one I remember was the first event that I won on Lake Eufaula, the first Bassmaster event that I won. And it was on the final day. It was a four pounder. I had my toughest day. It was exactly very similar conditions post front they had been biting i'd weighed in 28 12 25 and a few ounces in the final day it was tough to get a bite and i my third fish of the day had been coming within the first 10 minutes and it was about one o'clock on that final day i caught a four pounder and i thought well maybe i've got a chance i was able to catch another one about four pounds only weighed in 13 pounds that day but it was enough everyone's weight fell off it was enough to hold on but it's not always the biggest, might not be the smallest, but certain fish you'll always remember. Your, your most career. meaningful fish you've yeah, most got. most timely. Yeah. And I got to tell you about the one that got away that's most meaningful or that I remember the most or most disheartening. When I finished second to George Cochran in the right. classic, right. I lost one fish in three days. The only day I didn't have a limit. And George ended up beating me by 12 ounces. So, and it was just a pound and a half fish. And I had it up close to the boat and was going to swing it in the fish just, and I saw both hooks, it was on a crankbait, both treble hooks in the fish, but on outside of the mouth. And it made one last little turn and I just, I'm going to take it easy. And he just came unbuttoned. Mm. Cost me the Bassmaster Classic. So I certainly remember that one. Were either of those on videoed or taped? You won't have yours like Dustin might have his most meaningful fish on video. There was a camera with me that day. I don't remember if they actually got that shot. Those guys uh, back in those days, were, they weren't right on top of things like these camera crews we have now. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna go to our power pole catch of the day one more time and take a look at that to uh, take you a uh, transition you transition you to our Yamaha Taste the Bait. This has got to be it. The replay of the day and Taste the Bait. Dustin Connell is flipping a creature bait with a skirt, a punch skirt on it with a heavy sinker, ounce and a half to two ounce. He, he told us yesterday. Yes! Yes! And it takes it takes that heavy sinker to get down in this thick mat. Whoa! This is exactly the places that he's been catching these big fish all week. And today's 
weather conditions couldn't be in his benefit anymore. Well, that was it for Dustin Connell on our Yamaha Taste of Bake. Very, very effective for him. He made the right choice today. And well, why don't we just take a minute and listen to Dustin Connell talking about that bait and just exactly why it's effective. I've been looking for anything green and matted up on the river. I mean, these fish, they just live out here. They're just river fish. And we're gonna catch some today at some point. I'm gonna pull up to a mat and I'm gonna thump me about three of them. And they just sit on these little mats on the river. And, uh, you know, everybody wants to fish the pockets. They want to fish the pockets, they want to fish the pockets. And I'm like, I ain't all the fish in them pockets. They out here on this old river bank, catching them old river bass. I just do this at the house. I fish a lot of green trees and stuff like that at the house. And nobody ever does it. It's just very methodical. You gotta pick everything to pieces. It makes it a lot tougher because the water is dingy. Go from Dustin Connell talking about his bait and his approach here on the lake to Kevin Van Dam. And here's one, as we said many times, no one had really called this one in advance. Certainly didn't. Kevin's throwing a KVD, Strike King KVD's 300 series jerkbait. Sexy blueback herring. Well, you know, these fish have been setting up on shad, on big shad out here. So I think a lot of guys miss that, that there a lot of these fish are out away from the grass and stuff and, and not eating frogs. So I've been throwing a, a jerkbait, even though this water is real dirty, you know, they're real specific on a lot of these little points and shoots and things like that. And there's, if they're there thinking about shad and schooling like they've been, a jerkbait's just a great tool. Even in these lily pads, it comes through there pretty good. So it's, it's been really good for me. I caught 17 pounds on it uh, the second day of the tournament, all on the jerkbait. And then, you know, I've been mixing it up with a spinnerbait, a swimbait, a... Uh, uh, seen one something may have been guard um, you know just crankbait square bill a lot of different things like that but I just kind of got it narrowed down to a swim jig and uh, you know I've caught a few on a frog every day too just kind of around you, you, they'll, they'll set up on some of these outside clumps that are drifting across the deeper water but they're they're fish that are related to the center of these ditches and and that's what uh, you know that's what I've been focused on so that jerk bait has, has definitely been the bait that's got me to this point, though. It's a it's a Strike King 300 series KVD jerk bait in a sexy blueback herring color. I've thrown sexy shad, just a just a white. You know, you want something real bright because this water's pretty dirty. So I want them to be able to see it. So that's a that's really what I've been really been what I'm focusing on. Uh, I'm throwing a uh, a, a Strike King Pure Poison and uh, a Strike King regular uh, KVD swim jig. Uh, the swim jig I put a Rage Craw on, on the uh, Pure Poison. I've been putting a, a Strike King Menace Grub, just, just throwing white or shad colors, uh, you know, all the time on it. So, just one of those uh, things that you just, everything I'm throwing is, is basically shad imitating other, other than the frog. Frogs and shad. Yep, he, and different ways to get there. When I talked to him yesterday, he said these shad, threadfin shad, are really big. Normally, you don't see them four, five, and six, especially five and six inches long. He said that was one of the keys, that, and another reason he's using that jerk bait because of the length of the shad. Keith Fauché on the left, Jonathan Van Dam on the right there. Jonathan's saying this thing isn't over yet. No. You have to keep a close eye on him and Kevin for sure because they've been able to find little schools of fish. When they do start getting a few bites, it's, it's multiple fish in a row. Did I did I not hear you say that they had some, some better catches later in the very late in the day, right? They so did. that's something else they to did. factor both, in. Both of them, but unfortunately for them, Dustin Connell said the same thing. <laughs> yes. So it'll be a shootout right to the end. But.
Dustin's been able to hold Running them all so time. far. Well, our buddy Mark Zona pointed out day one uh, that Running we were in here time. doing Bassmaster Live. He says, uh, remember, boys, every time we've been doing this show, anytime it's a post-spawn show, those are the ones that come down to the, to the matter of inches, as they say. Keith Boucher just mentioned running out of time. All 12 of these guys are looking at their watch right now. They know that it's, time is getting short and a, a, any big fish, any, any bite, any quality fish will mean so much right now. They're down to an hour and a half of fishing time. These guys are up in this region of the, of the lake, of the waterway here. It's not time to panic, but it's not time to daydream either. Yeah, exactly. We've been watching Keith Poche. This is the third day in a row we've had a camera on him and he's really ha had his groove, so to speak, the other days. But today it's just, he's been searching all day long, just searching for another group of fish. And Can't get any rhythm going. And he's sort of, you can tell from his language and, and his body language also, that he's just a little bit clueless on this day. Yep. Wondering what happened. And really, Dustin's been the, the one he's been, he's only been, the only one we've been able to see this, it's really been able to stick to one pattern. He starts off a little bit fishing shallow with a swim jig, doing a few things, but basically three fourths to even more than that, large portion of the day, he's, he's had that ounce and a half, two ounce tungsten sinker, that creature bait and that skirt, punt skirt on there. And he's been able to just do it no matter what the conditions all four days. Yeah, it was kind of funny this morning. We saw him make that first stop to do the swim jig a little bit. He sits there and he watches John Van Dam catch a couple real quick. And he's like, well, there's no need to stick around and watch this. And he got, got onto his stuff. And that's when things started popping. Only one of our 12 Fred Rambanis has yet to catch a fish. Dave Lefebvre just put his first one in the live well. Wow. He'd been getting so many bites when we oh, were watching yeah. him on day three. He, he missed a lot of them and lost some quality fish, but he was still getting bites today. Sounds like he's really struggling. Sixth year on the Elite Series for Jonathan Van Dam. Huh? I, I can't get I can't get no information. Sounds like someone there on a boat dock or maybe up in their yard was trying to give some good local advice to Keith Poche and as you heard him say they, they're not allowed to get any information. But everybody wants to help. Oh yeah. But how many Pet bass have you been invited to catch through the years, Davey? I bet a quite, few. Quite a few, and I've, I've been asked to leave and not try to catch a few people's pet bass I'll also. Bet. But most of the folks are, they want to see you catch fish and they want to tell you where old, their four pound pet largemouth lives up under a certain, a certain part of the dock. What a day. What a tough day. What a tough day.
Well, he was one of the four guys on day one who had a 20 pound plus bag. Yeah, and I was just thinking, it's so tough to have your best area. The conditions just make it go away. He's, he used the word, it's, it's trash because of the dirty water. They got to be a couple in here. Ready to bite. When you're able to fish on the final day, you certainly want to try to win that tournament. But in the big picture, if you're going to have one tough day, today is the best day to do mm. it. You do it on day one and you yeah. find yourself at 80th or 90th place in the, in the points. things wake, awakening on the different parts of the lake. Dave LaFever just landed a three and a half pounder. Hmm. Two fish in the last few minutes, huh? Yeah. Wow. Just got a text from my friend Chris Lane saying awesome watching Bass Live. No, it's been a rough year for me, but I love seeing the American flag on these guys' shirts. Yeah. Absolutely. Chris will get it going here before long. Oh yeah. I don't I don't think that's gonna last forever. Not by any means. And look out when he does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gosh, he can when he gets it rolling, he's certainly a guy that knows how to finish the deal and not just be there on Sunday, but knows how to win. Last win on the Elite Series was a great one to watch down there in Sabine River. And coming down to the last hour of the last day, making the right decisions, just like the way he won the Classic on the Red River. Just a, he comes up big on that final day. Yeah, he does. He sure does. And I know he wants to be here when he sees Dustin Connell flipping those heavy weights and those mats. Ooh. Certainly the Lane brothers. I've been doing that their whole lives. So that's what we talked with Zona earlier this morning. I, it's mind boggling how some more guys aren't up there doing that. Yeah, yeah. Two and a half days of practice seems like a long time for these guys, but you go to a body of water that maybe you've never been to before, or like Kevin said, he'd been here one time when he was 17 years old. It's hard to, to try all the different patterns, the techniques throughout a, a body of water in two and a half days. It's just really tough. It seems like a lot of time, but it's not. We, there's Mark Menendez on the, okay, our first live shot. This is our, our extra cam we use for Dave Mercer sometime. They have run down Mark Menendez, and there he is right now. He's sitting at a, a limit, good limit, 12 pounds and three ounces. Like all the rest of these guys trying to upgrade it. He made that strong surge when we went to break. And so did Jonathan, but Dustin Canal catching that four and a half pounder calmed them right back yeah, down. <laughs> that'll, that was a surge stopper right there. Yes, buddy. Every time I leave, I think I need to come back in here. And every time I come back in here, I feel like I need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Oh. This ain't this ain't my day. Hey I man. Part of it. Part of it. Stressors of Championship Monday. Yes. Very similar to the stress to be, of Championship you know? Sunday. Didn't have enough. I think <laughs> it's remarkable. But on a Monday. Yeah. With, Except on a Monday. I had a note coming in this on maybe possibly the largest fish ever caught from Ross Barnett in a tournament last year in March. Dalton Laster from Morton caught an 11.35 pound. 
hey, pound boy. bass. So there's hope Absolutely for any of these guys. We got two though. We got two so far. I'd love to get a limit right quick. Ain't looking too promising though. And as far as we know, still in the Pelahatchie arm of the lower end of the lake. In fact, we can check that out right now. Dave Mercer understands, got a microphone. Someone's handed him a microphone. He's right there. Dave, is he in the Pelahatchie arm or has he changed again? That's exactly where he is, guys, and he's in an area where he has caught a lot of fish. But the difference today, and I got to believe it's just simply just due to this high pressure, is all week long he has done his damage with uh, two baits, a spinner bait and a swim jig. And now, uh, as you can see, he's fishing more of a traditional jig, slowing down a bit, and it's working for him so far here today. Earlier today when we joined him, he had one fish, but now a limit in the boat for over 12 pounds. An interesting uh, story. He talked to Thomas Allen, one of our writers, just a while ago, and he said, man, I've had a great career. Really, uh, I, I love my career. But he said, I've spent a lot of my career with getting in this position and fishing safe to make that paycheck. He said, that's over. He says, I know there were situations in the past where I believe, you know, I could have won if I had just, you know, really gone for the win and not played it so safe. So he said, at this point in his career, that is over. I know someone who always had that philosophy. It worked out. He's right there. I was fortunate enough to, for it to work out some, but the reason you know that, you saw me strike out multiple times <laughs> well, also, true. Tommy, that's for sure. But You wouldn't do it any different, would you? No, I wouldn't. One uh, of the cool... Go ahead, Dave. One of the cool things, guys, if you really watch the way he's fishing, this is stereotypical, you know, high pressure fishing, the way he's fishing, just really meticulously moving through these docks. All week long, we've seen anglers covering water quickly, including Menendez this morning. But you watch how he's fishing now. You know, he'll move along, set himself in front of a dock, put his poles down, and really make a lot of multiple casts. And several of his fish today, um, there was multiple fish that came from one dock. So he's just really picking it apart. Dave, don't you think with the, the high pressure we have today and this post-frontal conditions, don't you think this is certainly the best thing he can be doing right now? 100%, 100%. I mean, you, any angler knows it. I mean, in this situation, you, you know the fish are here. I mean, th this body of water's got way too many fish to not um, be catching them, but it's just, you're gonna have to slow down and that's exactly what he did. And making that adjustment throughout the day, because when we joined him this morning, it definitely was not the jig. It was uh, the traditional stuff that he had been using since, you know, the, for the first three days of this event, but slowing down with that jig. And, and I just can't stress how meticulous he is fishing this area. So, so super, super slow. Dave, I am so impressed. You go from takeoff to behind the dam, showing us the amount of water coming through here, and the next 15 minutes later, you, you're right there with Mark Menendez. You are mobile. I expect the next time we'll be with him, he'll be sitting next to an alligator in a, in a, in a, in a, in a uh, what's the boat called? The, uh, the airboat. The airboat. The airboat. And, you know, flying down one of the backwaters here. Well, I hate to break it to you guys, but through the magic of television, I'm actually in a Cush studio right now. We sent out our camera guy, Kerry, and my creepy voice you're hearing from a studio. What a creepy way to do it, <laughs> no, man. Really. I, I can't imagine we're watching someone. Right now. <laughs> Who would do such? Who would do such a thing? <laughs> Dave, we're locked in a, we're, we're, we're the creepy guys you know, locked in a studio each and every event. As, as a result of that, we don't get to get out there and look close at these guys and, and see them in person. We don't get to see their boats, and for years, uh, Mark Menendez's boats had a unique sort of thing where he had his fans' autographs all over the boat. Is that, I can't tell from this shot if whether that's still the case or not. It's a, it's a big white boat again, like he's always had. Is, is he still doing that? 
That that is not the case this year, Tommy. Okay. But I, that was a really cool thing where he he yeah. had people sign it. But so we can maybe start that today. I'll tell you what, if he wins it. I'll make sure people start signing it on stage. I won't even talk to them about it. We'll just we'll just get 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 it going. You just need to go to Target and get a bunch of sharpies. You, you know, one of the out. yeah yeah. I mean, uh, sharpies for everyone. Come to the weigh-in today, and if Mark Menendez wins, I'm sure he'll have no problem with you signing his boat. Right. One of the things you guys talked about a little earlier that that um, I got to chime in on is you talked about how the Van Dams earlier in the week compared this lake to Lake St. Clair. And when you look at the water color and some of the rebarb and that sort of thing under the water that these guys are dealing with, that does not scream St. Clair. But what it does is this lake, it's one of those shallow bowl-shaped lakes, very much like St. Clair. And I think that's where they're bringing the analogy. It's a shallow bowl-shaped lake, and it's also a very featureless lake in the way that, you know, quite often when people talk about, um, you know, drop-offs and that sort of thing, they're talking about drop-offs that are feet on, on a body of water like this or like <laughs> Lake St. Clair. I mean, just finding, you know, a six-inch difference in depth can be the difference maker. And that's, I think, where that kind of analogy is coming from with those guys. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Totally agree. I would think the fact that the wind's been blowing pretty hard, too, is it kind of helps the illusion a little bit to make you feel like a little bit more in an odd way that you're on St. Clair. Definitely, definitely. And the other day, Tommy, you asked me to explain the rebarb to you. And, and I'll be honest, when you, when you asked me, I kind of made up my answer because I didn't really understand oh, how you. the rebarb happened. <laughs> but basically, <laughs> here is the answer. You know, I talked to several of the anglers. You know, all it is is, is years ago they used rebarb to mark the channels. Mm -hmm. And over the years, the rebarb has rusted and become basically a bass boat dagger that sticks out of the bottom of these. Now, on some of them, they have actually gone around and put, um, you know, a PVC piping over it uh, to protect it. But uh, there is many of them that have remained unmarked. And uh, you could just imagine what a rusted chunk of, six inch rusted chunk of rebarb can do the bottom of a fiberglass bass boat. Someone needs to hijack a, a, a truckload of those uh, noodles, you know, that the kids use in the swimming pool and just hand them out to everyone at the ramp every day. Since when you see one of those things, take this noodle and Tape it on there. You I know, thought you strap were, it on. I That's thought you were going to idea. Dave to do that for us this yeah. afternoon. <laughs> oh, no, Dave's busy. Didn't, didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> Dave's spoken for this afternoon. He's, he's got a lot to do this afternoon. Oh, oh, Tommy, I can quickly get a dozen or so of them done before weighing, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I invite you to. We'd love it. We'd love to see that. You'll have to get out of that creepy studio to do it, though. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the problem. That's the problem because catering is going to be here in any minute. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad you found a comfortable place to, to tell it like it is. We, I hope we can get back with you before the fishing is over. We just got about an hour and a half worth of fishing left to go here on this final day. We're about to start the fourth quarter after we take a break here. If Dustin Connell can hang on to what he's got again. We think if he puts one more in the boat like this. Yes. Oh, that's well, that what I'm talking about, baby. Hey, we ain't quitting. Biggin. That fish meant so much for so many reasons. Obviously, another four and a half pounds added to his weight, but mentally, to only have three fish and then catch that fish, and he's been stuck on four for a while now, so that fish meant so much to him for so many reasons. Dustin Connell ain't quitting. Ditto for Jonathan Van Dam, Mark Menendez, and Kevin Van Dam, and all the rest. But we're getting closer and closer to what may turn into the inevitable, but we gotta, we gotta see it for ourselves. We'll be back with more after this break. Man, it's slow today. Yep. Mom, I caught a fish. Good job, Sweet. Hey, what kind of lure is that? It's a Livingston. They have electronic bait fish sounds that activate as soon as they hit the water. Easiest way to catch a fish. Hey, thanks. 
The competition is fierce, and the prizes are huge. The only thing missing is you. Fantasy Fishing presented by Toyota. Sign up for free and face fans from across the nation. Grand prize winner receives a Triton Yamaha package, including a Triton 189 TRX. MSRP of $37,293. The classic and each individual elite event winner will receive $2,500 Bass Pro Shops gift cards. With the runner-up receiving a GoPro Hero 4 black camera. Sign up and pick your team today at BassmasterFantasy.com. Tennessee, how's everybody doing today? We are excited to get this season kicked off. It all starts here. Barely hit, baby. Barely hit. Ooh, yes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Stay down, stay down, stay down, open your mouth, open your mouth. Yes. <sighs> Thank you. Yeah! That's a big one. That's for you, Mama. How about that right there, though? Woo! Ooh, yes. 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 Master Elite second event for 2017 at legendary Lake Okeechobee. So much tradition here and so many amazing eye-popping <laughs> results. Yeah, buddy's right. Yes! Yes! Give me some high five. Yes. Take a closer look at that one. <laughs> I ain't never flipped a fish that big before, I don't think. Woo! Damn. with the biggest one. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> good one. It's four in a row. There he is. That's a good one. Woo! That's what's this out here. Fat free spawners. Yep. We get it done today, boys. Oh my God, yes. Boom, baby. Boom, shakalaka, cha 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 giant bass. Do you feel the big one? Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Band Piglet. 2017 Bassmaster Elite Series Toledo Bend Champion John Murray. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Don't get in there. <laughs> Got her in open water. <laughs> oh my God. Give me some nuts. Come on now. Give it up. Look at that one. Yeah! That's a con.
Monroe beauty right there. That is a big one right there. Big one. Big one. Good 10 pounder. 10 pounder. That's a 10 pounder, bro. Oh my God, that's a 10 pounder. There we go. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How about it? How about a big round of applause for Jordan Lee? 27 pounds, four ounces. Unbelievable. Your Geico Bassmaster Classic champion, Jordan Lee, 10 years ago, sat in those stands. And today, he is a Geico Bassmaster Classic champion. You know, at Advance Auto Parts, we have some of the most knowledgeable and helpful people working in our stores. We just thought you should know. Because buying online and picking up your part at the local Advance Auto Parts store is so easy that, well, the most they may get to say to you is, hi, here's your part. It's a shame, really. Buy online, pick up in store in 30 minutes. Advance Auto Parts, let's get you back on the road. You're watching the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Elite at Ross Barnett. Brought to you live by Lowrance. This Ross Barnett event is the first time ever for the Elite Series to come here, and this is the fourth stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. Stop number five, gonna be one of the big ones, our Toyota Bassmaster Texas Fest, benefiting Texas parks and wildlife. Lufkin, Texas, and the great Sam Rayburn Reservoir. We're going to have our anglers out there. Great fishing. We've talked about that. Expected to be happening at Sam Rayburn. And a couple of other twists. Uh, lots of stuff going on on site there. We'll be doing the way. We'll be getting our official weights, weighing in the boat, and releasing the fish out there for the most part. So that'll be great. It's going to definitely be different. Dustin Connell, the man who was hanging on top, he took over the lead on day number three of this tournament. Started the day with it, lost the lead. Got his limit. He's back in the lead. He's back. We've got five fish now, and we'll get into that fifth fish in just a few minutes. But right now, let's give a listen to Dustin talking before this day about his prospects. You know, here's what I've said all week, and I've, I've kind of lived by this motto now, is the conditions are the same for everybody. I, I'm done with worrying. I really am. I'm, I'm not going to worry no more. I'm not worried about conditions. I'm not worried about the weather. I ain't worried about the wind. Uh, I know how to catch them, and I know what I'm doing, and, I, and, and it's paying off. So I'm going to stick to my game plan. It ain't bragging if he can back it up, but he can back it up. That That is awesome to hear from a young angler like that. Uh, Elite Series rookie, but you can tell he's no rookie to tournaments and having success in them. He said, I know what I'm doing. I'm I'm done with worrying. I'm done said. with worrying. I can, I can do it and I can catch him. And he has gone out and done all of those things today and done them in a, in a winning fashion. We're not going to declare him the winner yet, but boy, he has done everything it takes up to this last hour and a half of fishing toward that purpose right there. We look at our 
12 anglers, the way they're spread out across the lake. Not too much action at the bottom end of the lake. We got, do have three anglers. Bobby Lane has moved a little farther south now. That's the first time we've seen anyone in that area of the lake. Yesterday, yes. was, Bobby was moving around, fishing some different areas than he had the first day, first two days. And yesterday, he was able to grind it out and hang on. He's doing a lot of moving around again today. And we'll see if he has any success. We've not seen anybody in that area of the lake all week. We've had Bobby, Bobby Lane in our first two days of coverage, both days. And he's been flipping as well. Different, different sort of scheme as, as the one Dustin Connell has had. Uh, maybe not quite as heavy a weight. And, different sort of look to the places he's been flipping, not main, main river stuff. Keith Pochet has is, is stayed in the same area of the lake, that's for sure, all week. He's been going up in the canal there, not far, but it's just a couple mile stretch where he's he's been all four days. He had a, a, a good way to put this place. Love-hate relationships. Every time I leave here, I think I need to come back. As soon as I come back, I'm pretty sure I need to leave. A, a different one note. Fred Rubanis, the only angler on Bass Track, registering a zero, but confirmation from his marshal, he, marshal, he has three fish for seven pounds. So not a biggest stringer, but that puts him up in the seventh, eighth place spot right now and still shy of his limit as well. Yep. Julie is glad that you told yeah. her yeah. that, <laughs> I promise you. I'm sure she's watching. Kevin Van Dam, we saw his spot there. He had 18 pounds, seven ounces, Jonathan Van Dam. Not too far away from where Kevin is. We keep rolling up and Brent Chapman has been steadily moving upriver throughout the course of this day. He started down in the marina and just couldn't get anything going with that topwater lure. That's been a thing that's pay paid every day until today. As we get closer and closer to our leader, Dustin Connell, who also happens to be the leader in Bassmaster Rookie of the Year points. Look at that right there and he's Opened up a little bit of a margin over Jamie Hartman. Jamie Hartman has had a great oh rookie God. season, but Dustin Connell has uh, it's made it tough on him this, this week for sure. Jamie Hartman's proven you don't have to be 26 years old to be a rookie. You can be uh, a, a few years older than that, man, but he's, uh, he's living the dream. Made it out here to the Bassmaster Elite Series and has done very, very well throughout the court. We were talking earlier about you look at these guys who've won this award in the past and you don't you don't see very much in the way of a dud in there and i think we can look at this at, at this list and tell exactly what you're talking about yeah if i have a company and i'm looking for an angler to sponsor uh, the guy that wins rookie of the year is usually a good bet we've we've seen some through the years and they they're all tremendous fishermen and and they usually have a a pretty long career on the Bassmaster Elite Tournament Trail. Just about all the be good guys to get in on the ground floor of, I guess. You bet. Yeah. yeah. Impressive list. Going all the way back the last 10 years with Steve Kennedy. Uh, set the record, I believe, the next year uh, for the Bassmaster for the biggest single day catch on a clear lake in California. Quite an, an impressive list there for sure. Talk about early success. Derek Remitz there in 07 won the very first tournament he ever fished with the Bassmaster Elite Series. That too. Quite impressive. Can I get a bite? <laughs> Dang it, boy. I don't know what the flaps per minute are on Poche's jersey, Davey, but the wind seems to be blowing right into his little area. It looks concealed on the map, but it looks like it's blowing right in on him. It. it does, and it certainly looks like that watercolor has changed from the first two days that we were on him live. And an interesting note that we've talked about, but not everyone has the luxury to be with us all six hours. You see the watercolor where Dustin Connell is fishing in. It's this dirty or dirtier, but it's so far up the river, those fish are, are more accustomed to that dirty water up there. And down here, even though they're up the lake, they're not nearly as far up as he is. These fish have a lot of clear water and they move and adjust where they're positioned to, to stay with that clear water. Here, whether up, up the river, they just, they live in it their whole lives. They, and we're talking about clean or clear water being a relative term here. I mean, we, places we say, we look at and say are, are clean could be well under a, a foot of visibility, but still what you'd call clean water yeah. on a day like today. Good point. It's always relative when we say clean or dirty water. Got some highs from people out there. Hey, hey hashtag Bass Live. Let us know what you, we want to talk about. A y University of Arkansas Ooh, bass pig. fisherman right there. This is an exam week. He's watching in class right now. 
Aren't That's, they taking exams? Looks like college? a lecture. Oh, looks yeah. like a lecture. We love to see these pictures. Great stuff. Yeah, I, I think one of our messages a couple of hours ago was from a fire station in Los Angeles. Yes. So yes. that was pretty cool, watching the, watching the bass live from a fire station in the L.A. area to Fayetteville, Arkansas, and a razor back on the line there. Who else we got here? Working is a lot easier with Bass Live included. There you go. Why they have two screens. Yeah. Why you have two screens on your desk. Yep. One for work and one for play. One screen will do it though. There you go right there. In school. They didn't have to cheat in South Africa. Mark Bywater told us it's May Day there. It's a holiday. Just getting to watch fishing on a national holiday. All right. Well, I thought Los Angeles was a long distance watcher, yeah. <laughs> viewer. Watching at Bass Nation while keeping up with the Bass. Send us some more. We, we throw your pictures up there. We'd like to see your setup. How are you enjoying Bass Live on this Monday? Would you give a kind of prize for the most interesting picture of someone watching Bass Live anywhere in the world? Could be at work, could be at home, could be in your car, wherever you sleep. You can shoot us a picture. <laughs> I'm sure everybody struggled. They got to, man. If they caught them, I don't know. That I don't I won't I won't believe it. I mentioned that guy earlier that the college angler that works at Joe Gibbs Racing tearing down the cars sent in a photo of them watching on Bassmaster Live, and then he texted me back and said that they are uh, the race team, Joe Gibbs, the most Toyota cars in the field of NASCAR. Like, you know, their whole team is the most sponsored Toyota team in the whole field of NASCAR, which was kind of a cool tie to, the, to fishing. Sure is, sure is. I got a friend in Canada that lives on the other side of Lake Ontario that just oh, okay. texts me. Davey, I'm screaming, Keith Poche, slow down. But it's hard to make yourself slow down when you don't get a bite, but you you know you need to slow down like Mark Menendez seems to have effectively done. I agree, it might be a good, good idea, but you don't want to slow down if you don't have any confidence you're around some fish. It's That's catch, the dilemma. Yeah, it's a catch-22. If you if you find something, it's a lot easier to slow down. If you don't find anything, you got to keep looking. And that may be the hardest time to slow down is when you're looking. Yep. But we heard Keith saying, I know it's got to be tougher on everyone, and, and it is, but... Those guys that are really dialed in, the Van Dams and what they're doing, Dustin Connell, what he's doing, Mark Menendez, those guys that are really dialed in. It's easier to slow down when you have confidence that you've got a certain piece of cover or a certain depth change like the Van Dams. Something in specific that you can slow down and, mm -hmm. and really milk. We've had wind every day of this tournament. The wind has become a factor each and every day. And you look at the keys to success here. Got guys who've sort of found windproof strategies. You know, whether it's throwing a jerk bait, which works better in the wind, or yep. Dustin Connell up way up the river, out of the wind a little bit, and you got the current anyway, so it's not. Dustin Connell just caught about a, a one five. So a one and a quarter to one and a half doesn't seem like a lot, but it gets rid of a one pounder, upgrades him to 10 and three quarters, almost 11 pounds. Every ounce is counting right now. And Matt Lee, a lead series angler, just sending a thing. He's watching. He, in his garage, he's got a TV mounted watching while he's undoing all the Ross Barnett mess. What does that mean? He's, he's trying to get all of his uh, rods and tackle all sort, sorted after just fishing this week. But interesting note there, they, Matt Lee, Jordan Lee, Auburn competed against Dustin Connell head-to-head, -head, great competitors. Dustin's oh. from Roll Tide, Alabama. Yep but they don't let that get in the way of their friendship.
Tommy, is it time to go sea pecking? I think you're right. <laughs> That's, I was just wondering that oh, myself. Like yes, this sir. Hey, we're going to You gonna guys are excluded this from this, too. Both of you two are we're, excluded from this. This is for the fan. Fine, fine, fine. We got nothing to prove. We got <laughs> nothing to prove except. Well, you've mentioned well, them both. Things. I'm out All of All right, this one Dixie Peck tires and wheels. <laughs> Bassmaster Elite Series trivia. Name the 2017 elite venues where Davey Hype has bass victories. All right, so That's we're going to go. We're going to find a twofer here. So this it's gonna year. Be the twofer going to be Dardanelle and Champlain. Is it going to be Rayburn and Barnett? Is it going to be Dardanelle and St. Clair? Ooh. Or St. Clair and Toledo Bend? I know the answer. I know I the answer. I got it too. My wife knows the too. answer. I got it too. We're, we got nothing to prove. <laughs> I we you remember. Find. That's good. Hashtag Bass Live. Yep. Answer Natalie, that. if you're watching, you can use hashtag Bass Live. I picked a heck of a year to sit on the sideline, didn't I, Tommy? Oh, this was God. a great schedule I know, for me. yeah, yeah. Did you think about this now? I certainly did. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> we'll let you chew on that for a bit. And before we go to break, we'll uh, roll out that answer for you. The Dixie Peck Tires and Wheels Bassmaster Elite Series Trivia. The thought of working with such a great team was just more than I could resist. <laughs> Why be out winning tournaments? On when I could be here with mechas of bass fishing while you could be here in a creepy studio. <laughs> hey, ho! Well, when he does flip it in there, it doesn't sit still either, does it? No, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, we're not going to let it. We're not going to let things calm down there. I got some news from the Facebooks. Uh-oh. News from the Facebooks. Mm -hmm. Seth Fighter, girlfriend posted that they got engaged. How about that? How about that? Congratulations. Fixing to get on the matrimony train. Were they watching Bass Live? Did I think it so. I think so. Did it inspire him to propose? Who's or got to answer that? That would did be epic. Did he propose epic. while yeah. watching Bass Live? Who that did could the, be a first. Who did the proposing? That's the first question. That's something else we need to give a prize for, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, that's right. Anyone that proposes while watching Bass Live. Yeah, we have to get a piece of the actual wedding cake in order to verify that. Speaking of cakes, somebody's birthday tomorrow? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, I think you mentioned that, Davey. Mike McKinnis? One Mike McKinnis, the man at the helm, the uh, producer of our... Bassmaster Live broadcast there. There he there is. Oh, yeah. He is. Ooh, there he is. Hey, Mike. Hey, oh, there oh, he is. Celebration there. Happen. We're left out. They're, they're fine to just let, let us twist in the wind out here in the studio while they're in there celebrating and having cake and ice cream and all that kind of stuff. He can't talk to us now. His mouth's full of cake. Yeah, they're in there eating all the cake. And we're out here in the creepy studio. Yeah, out here, with, you know, smelling like coffee. What's out about the fighter thing is she only accepted because he's in the top 12 of the AOI points right now. Oh, now, you don't think that about people? We don't say no. that about I'm teasing them. <laughs> Watching Keith O'Shea here, he's had a tough time catching him today. He's, he's been able to grind it out every day. Said he only had six bites on day three, but was able to catch good ones he had 15 pounds he had a three bit bites today and only two of them in the boat as good as our maps are and all that I would imagine Davy it's still pretty hard to before you start a tournament to look at the map and say, well, if we get a whole bunch of rain, this place will be bad, this place will be washed out. You really, there's so many variables. So, so many variables, you're exactly right, Tommy. The wind, the rain, the, the direction, two biggest for sure. That, yeah. The direction of that wind. <clears throat> and it's changed today, we haven't seen it blow from this direction. Mm -hmm. Mark Menendez was, his best area for catching those bigger fish was along the riprap. The wind had been hitting it from 
the south or southeast, southwest, the previous days, today is, or from, yes, from the south. Really good fishermen made their surge to take away Dustin Connell's lead, but there we see it back close to five pounds again. Boy, yeah, it's just about where we started this day. And right now, we have one hour of fishing time left. Every minute that clicks away is in Dustin Connell's favor. Favor, that's for sure. Just need to notice Keith Poche, and I'm not picking on him. He just happens to have the live camera He's on him right now. But he just went right by mad and didn't didn't pitch anything in it. We saw Bobby Lane doing that quite a bit. Guys that you know have caught tons and tons of fish under those mats, but. Just because you flipping them at doesn't make it easy. I mean, Dustin has only caught the five fish today, or six. Is it six, Ron? Now he's called once or twice? Once. Yeah. Cold one. Cold once, yes. Before we go to break, we said we would uh, resolve this question about uh, Davy Height. Davy Height related question the 2017 Elite Venues, where Davy Height has had. BASS victories in the course of his career. Was it A, Dardanelle and Champlain? Was it B, Rayburn, Ross Barnett? B, Dardanelle and St. Clair? Or was it St. Clair and Toledo Bend? What combination is the right combination? Let's see what your responses have been there. Here's some guesses from off of Twitter. All right, C. I already forgot which one C was. <laughs> we weren't qualified, so we... <laughs> yeah, that's right. So we, C yeah. was the Dardanelle, St. Clair. St. Clair and Dardanelle, okay. Got D. Warner, 17. Jim Revels. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got a pattern Let's go. emerging here. And your answer is... Mm-hmm, it was C. C. Everybody's on the money with that one. Dardanelle and St. Clair, two great victories on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Or with the Bassmaster. Made that a little easier for a lot for a lot of folks because there's a whole lot of people that remember the Dardanelle victory because I did the infamous oh, yeah. dance on the front of the boat on my 40th birthday. Showing them how to break it down. I mean, that's <laughs> nobody has ever done that. Before or since. It looked like something on the water. Water down that day. <laughs> Ah, that was good stuff, and I'm hoping for a replay when we get back to Dardanelle here. I mean, a, a revisiting of that. Plus the 2017 version of that dance. I mean, I think you can work on that a little bit, David. That would be fantastic. <laughs> fantastic stuff. Dustin Connell getting closer and closer. I'm not saying he can smell the barn from here, but boy, I'll tell you what, he can think about that trophy in each minute that clicks away. Gets him closer to a victory. One hour of fishing left to go. The Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Elite at Ross Barnett is brought to you by Shell Rotella, Yamaha, Triton Boats, Toyota, Power Pole, and by Skeeter Boats. Facts matter. All monofilament is not the same. Berkeley is the strongest, smoothest, most dependable monofilament line in the world. Why would you risk your fishing trip to a line that's made who knows where just to save a buck? Berkeley has been making and perfecting trialing in America for over 75 years. I spool nothing less than the best that's Berkeley trialing, and that is a fact. Champions aren't born, they're created. Every turn of the prop, 
every mile on the lake, every cast of the rod, every fish they catch, and every pound they weigh. It builds who they are. It builds a legacy. Hey, thanks, Dave. Out of office? Oh, man. Hi, this is Skeet. Skeet. Out of office? Dude, don't be mad because I thought of it. What? I gotta go. I got someone to the line. Go to teamgtfishing.com to check out my real job. We're supposed to be working. I am working. Is there a place where the underwater images are the clearest you've ever seen? We're seeing every fish, we're seeing every detail of structure, and where every bottom contour was visible, where whatever you wanted to see below the surface was real. Do you want to go? Structure Scan 3D is the future of fishing. We can show you how to find fish faster and catch fish in a way you've never experienced. Let's. You're watching the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Elite at Ross Barnett. Brought to you live by Lowrance. Since I've been 10 years old, you know, I've always wanted to be in this position. And uh, it's always been my dream. It's, it's every fisherman's dream to be here. And you can get here because, I, I mean, it ain't like I came from a, a, a big family and all that. I mean, I, I, you, got, you got to grind to get where you're at. I don't know what to say, man. You gotta go catch him. Last day. It's like my eighth day on the water, man. God. No matter what, you know, it's been a great week. Uh, I, uh, I don't know how the weather's gonna affect them, but uh, I can't ask for a better position to be in. Um, I've got a five pound lead. I gotta put my head down and fish and just go catch them. Um, leave it all out there. At the end of the day, however it folds, that's how it goes. Um, but I've already won in my boat. I really have. Let's stay hooked. Yes! Yes! Oh! That's what I'm talking about, baby! Hey! We ain't quitting! Biggin! Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bacon. Yes. That's why I keep doing this. Yes. One more like that, baby. One more. Okay, now here's the deal. He's wise beyond his years, mature beyond his years, knows the business of bass fishing very well already at an early age. Put on that weigh-in stage and he's got a shot at winning. Represent your sponsors, put the glasses on up on the hat so they can still see them. We gotta see the waterworks get flowing there. We want, we want the full treatment there from Dustin Connell. We gotta remind Dave Mercer to you know, well, set us up for that so we can get to get the ultimate shot of it. We need to because I guarantee you it's gonna happen. I'll be shot if it does it. I'll be shot if it does it. And it probably won't be just him either. I can tell you that right now. A lot of emotion out there on the water for the young angler out of the college series, car at college series. Here and doing so well in his rookie year, Dustin Connell with the lead. And we are well into the final hour of fishing on Ross Barnett Reservoir. Final day and 12 anglers out there. And Dustin Connell has Re-established his lead he started the day with almost within a pound of it. 
we have them at over five pound lead. The one thing that has been consistent, you can see the guys are moving around a little because it's getting close to weigh-in time, but the one thing that's been consistent with the hummingbird lay of the lake all week is when we see Dustin Connell, he's farther upriver than any other angler. Our last event was Toledo Bend and John Murray doing something a little bit different than everyone was doing, something he had done before there, but a little bit different than everyone was doing. Blowing, I think I'm trying to decide if there's, I think, if there's any uh, shore protection. Mark Manin has just called up a pound. Should be climbing into second place. He is. He's right there in second place. He's uh, got a pound back on Dustin Connell. He's four, four pounds and 10 ounces back. We saw that surge, man. a nine pounder right quick, you know, and then like a seven. That was, man. Be all right. Be looking pretty good, huh? I mean, you know, that's not asking too much. A nine and a seven, that's only two fish. That won't even, even give me a limit, so. You never know when you're gonna get, get a big bite. You never know. Murray, something a little bit different there, and Dustin Connell doing something. We say different. There may have been other anglers doing that, but among the guys we watch, nobody doing anything really close to that. How many times has that made the difference, finding oh, something yeah. different? It does. It does. And like we've, we've talked about, it might not have been the best pattern, but it's the best pattern that he didn't have to compete with other anglers. So it's the winning pattern, it's the, the winning techniques that, that he has used. Where Keith Pochet and Mark Davis started this tournament may have been the best spot and the best pattern of the tournament had they had it by themselves. But we saw there was 10 or 12 boats just swarming around that area the first few days of the tournament and just couldn't stand that pressure. And every productive area, that was kind of the story. I mean, you know, you, everybody had company. Except for Mark Menendez, day one. Yeah. We talked about the most interesting places to be watching bass live. A friend of mine in South Carolina said, I've, I've got the most interesting place. And he sent me a picture of it. He's on a skitter logging oh, no. on, a, on a big skitter that they pull the, the trees and the logs up to the deck with. So that is certainly an interesting place. To, like you said, tractors. Uh, and even skitters now, air conditioned, they're enclosed, and he's watching bass live while he's pulling logs through the through the woods. That is awesome. I love that. That's so awesome as well. Uh, a guy who was down at Toledo Bend watching all the action just a few weeks ago, bait uh, manufacturer Cajun Lures. He's sitting in his bait pouring shop with a TV watching Bassmaster Live. Nice. Just texted me that. And tractors are more comfortable and skitters are more safe than they used to be. A lot safer than that old choke chain that, was, that goes from here to there through the woods and could pop at any time and take your head off. Big one. Kevin's got a big one, he said. Giant. Oh, that's the one. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. Uh oh. You knew, knew these guys were going to make another surge. That. That's a good one there. Still wish I wouldn't have thrown that three pounder back, though. That's a good call. Well, I'd say. He's 512 behind. He's making about <laughs> half of that, probably. Bam! Drop the mic. <laughs> yes. Last minute fireworks. 
Even Kevin slowed down. Yep, he did. Talk us through that catch. So this spot right here, I fished in practice and I caught a, uh, I caught a big one here. And uh, you know, it's just protected behind all this wind. And I just, you know, I'm just flipping a shad colored rage craw, blue glimmer. Same thing, you know, I know these fish are focused on shad. And he's just right on the backside of this little island where it's protected. Tucked up underneath a little mat. And See if we can get another good bite here. I, there's, I know there's some more good fish. It's muddy on the front side of this thing, but this gets a little bit of protection. But that right there was huge for my chances. He didn't. He literally dropped the mic. <laughs> Not figuratively. That was funny. He asked, huh? where's, where's some protection? Uh, it's five pounder all day. All day. Biggest fish of the final day so far. I'd say that fish is a little over sister. five. There's going to be another one in Probably here, too. Probably about a four-pound upgrade. I know the... Still a little short, but he's definitely... Trend in the right way. Yes, sir. We don't have a ton of time to. Right where he should be, right on the little corner. Five pounder hits bass track, KVD with 13 and a half to 14 pounds right now. That'll put him two and a half to three pounds back. Again, we get to that 17, 18 goal that we talked about earlier. They're making pretty good decisions all week, man. It feels good to, to change things around a little bit. Bass track had it at what weight? Five. They're not live anymore, are they? Oh, they are. Yes, we're watching you, Kevin. Well, that one was for Jackson. Let's hopefully I can get one for Nicholas now. <laughs> Those boys just finished college and uh, mighty proud of the job they did to work hard their first year at it, you know, take it, take it serious. Despite all the bad advice from Zona. Kevin's got enough blue trophies to go around for his kids. Yeah. <laughs> It'd take a real big family to yeah. use up all those blue trophies. I, th I think everybody that wants the trophies <laughs> in that household has got an armful. <laughs> got to throw one more message in. People watching from different places. Uh, Will sent, sent a message in that uh, he's marshaled several times. He is watching from Afghanistan where he met my son just a few weeks ago. All right. Very big, nice. Big shout out to those guys that are watching from overseas in harm's way to absolutely getting a job done all right there he ought to be got some more photos of folks folks watching live on a monday championship monday there it is right there Again, that's why you get the two screens set up. 
That's awesome. When you get tired of working, you watch a little Bass Live. When you get tired of, no, you don't get tired of watching Bass Live. No, you don't. Yeah, that's, that just works one way. <laughs> Sam Greenhaw's Greenhaw got that set up. Uh, yeah, that's in, in class. This is... All right, watching. Yeah, in the garage. In if the... not, he needs to put on the brakes really fast. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, don't be watching <laughs> while you drive. We have to say that. We're legally required to say that. We need hiding it. out. That's awesome, guys. Hiding out. That's right. A lot of engineers watching Bassmaster Live. I see a lot of... Yep. I see a lot of... Including Braxton's mommy. Let's go poche. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. There's some guys hard at work. They've probably got some... Oh, wait, that's our guys in the back of the... They're, they have to watch Bassmaster Live. It's less of a treat to them. Hey, when they send that picture, they need to get the cake frosting off their lips. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're all... They're birthday all... Birthday cake eaters there. Full of cake. They're there stuffed. we go. I like that one. Testing hydrants at work. All right. Firefighter stuff. Uh, that's cool. That's Listening really cool. Listening to it through a speaker. A lot of people do that. A lot of people just listen. That's, is it, there you go. There's there your go. Joe Gibbs racing. That's the one we referenced earlier. Thank you, guys. Carson Orlana. At Kyle Bush. Joe Gibbs. Give the safety men watching the, from the truck a shout out. Hey, guys. Thank you. A lot of people got a lot of good in-car setups there to watch. They it. really do. They really do. If your truck is your office, why can't you watch Bassmaster Live at the office? SJ Birch 32, thank you very much. Good stuff. Absolutely fantastic. We love that. Hashtag Bass Live. Questions, pictures. Guys, it's taken all day, but nine of our top 12 either have four or five fish in the boat. So we're getting close to having most of the top 12 uh, with their limit. That would be good. Had everybody with a limit. Kevin Van Dam with the fireworks in the last 15 minutes here. Wow, what a nice one he caught there. We'll be replaying that one for you, too. It's the biggest bass of the day, we figure. Right, Ronnie? For so Kevin? far. Yeah. So far. We talked about him being focused this morning. I guarantee you he is lights on focus right now, <laughs> knowing that he definitely oh. has a chance if he gets one more good bite. You probably lament that early one. That Leads us to a question from Jerry Hopper. What is it with getting hooked in the tongue that makes them expire? That's a great question that I really and truly don't have the answer to. Normally, if you, you see blood from a gill or something like that, you right, understand right. it. But it's a, it's a weird deal. Most times, oh, 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 he's hooked up a big one. He come off. Oh. First time I've seen him Flipping something really thick. Come yeah. off. God, dog. Ah! Just another example, like we talked about Dustin Connell, being able to get in there and, and get that fish. So often you see this right here when those fish are tucked away in that really thick cover. When it's your time, it's your time sometimes, yeah. right, Davey? You betcha. Oh, it's a tough break. You wanted to see Keith get a good one in the boat today. It's so slow for him all day long. It's a good sign for us, though. We've seen yeah. Kevin was able to land his, but that's two big bites here in the last few minutes. And you pointed out that's the first time we've seen him flip into something that looks ah, like that. Like what we've seen from Dustin Connell. <laughs> yep. Boy, that's so frustrating. I've certainly had it happen. It's work all day to get that big bite. And... I don't know how big it was, but it was a fish for sure. Jonathan 
Van Dam having made his way down to the rip wrap, not too far from the dam, the outflow. Just picking up with his Kevin Van Dam. Moments ago, five and a half pounder. And now the, the race is on. Beat the clock, catch another one of those, and got a shot at win 24. I've lost a couple fish today. You know, they just missed a couple fish, I should say. That's the way it goes. I don't think it makes that much of a difference, but. Maybe a couple spots, points. For KVD's bag right now, guys, he's got that five pounder we just saw, uh, two and a half roughly, and then a bunch of twos to two and a half. So whether they are two and a half or just a two even, but a lot of room to upgrade for him. Same as Canel. Canel probably still has two that are under two pounds. Boy, this thing's getting right down to the nitty gritty now, and mm -hmm. it's just a little more than 30 minutes left. Maybe not even that for some of these guys. The ride won't be won't take quite as long today as it has the last last two days to to get back to the check-in right. spot. The wind's blowing, but not nearly as much as it has been. Down for check-in, you know, today definitely didn't go as I had hoped it would. I really thought that, uh, you know, I'd be able to get some better bites and have a have a shot at this thing. You know, I mean, a lot changed up the river. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot changed for everybody, to be honest with you, but, you know, there's still a little time left. You never know, you could, you know, come in here and catch a five or six pounder or something like that and it'd go a long ways, but it hasn't, uh, hasn't exactly been an easy day, that's for sure. Skeet going by. Dustin Cannell's halfway down the lake. Number three! <laughs> ah. Number three. Ah. Ah. Dang it, boy. Ain't big, but it's a keeper. A little more weight. Time at 225. We need to go. God, dog, no, we need to go. Huh? Keith would love to get two more uh, of those and right. It doesn't matter the size. You don't be the only guy that comes in without a limit on today. That's very, very important. Oops, to get that limit today, no matter where you finish. Guys looking to finish on top is this fellow right here who started on top to begin this day. Dustin Connell of Alabama. The Alabama River veteran at a young age. Yes. Doing some savvy right yes. there. Some grit and determination to get the job done. A great catch. It's turning point catch That's for the day. That's what I'm talking about, baby. We ain't quitting. Biggin. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Is that the one that's going to do it thank for Dustin Connell or will Kevin Van Dam in the final? Minutes of fishing be able to 
engineer one more five pounder or so and make this thing really, really close. Yes. Not a good time to check out. Thanks That's for being with us on Championship it. Monday. Yes. In fact, we'll show you that one right now. Kevin Van Dam. One more fishing. like that, baby. Certainly turned around the last hour of fishing here for one sure. More. It certainly has. And Kevin Van Dam knew he needed one or two more good fish to have a chance. And Giant. That's one. <laughs> yeah! I knew I made a good decision. Look at that. That's a good call. Huh? <laughs> Bam! Kevin Van Dan gets one Not more like that. He's two and a half pounds, two and three quarters pound back. We will have a tight, tight weigh-in. It is going to be very, very close to fetching. Come to pass the final weigh-in today again coming up here at 2.15 Eastern, the 2.15 Central Time, 3.15 Eastern Time. It's one hour earlier than we've having it, been having it each and every day. Ridgeland, Mississippi, our 12 anglers, and we will crown our champion. But we've got a little more fishing left to go here on Bassmaster Live. Don't go away. We'll take a quick break and be right back. And it's slow today. Yep. Mom, I caught a fish. Good job, Sweet. Hey, what kind of lure is that? It's a Livingston. They have electronic bait fish sounds that activate as soon as they hit the water. Easiest way to catch a fish. Hey, thanks. Love bass fishing, then show your support by joining BASS today. Since 1968, BASS has been serving bass fishing enthusiasts with information and tournament coverage that make you a better angler. When you sign up today, you'll join over half a million outdoorsmen who love bass fishing. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Log on to Bassmaster.com to join bass today. Whether you're trying to figure out how to replace your rotors, change your oil, or install a new air filter, we know you've got a lot to think about. That's why we made our Speed Perks rewards so easy. Spend $100, get $20 off your next purchase. No cards, no points, no nonsense, no thinking. Save that for the important stuff, like figuring out your anniversary. Advance Auto Parts, let's get you back on the road. You're watching the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Elite at Ross Barnett. Brought to you live by Lowrance. Bassmaster Live, and we are uh, headed towards the, the going home place here to get back for the final weigh-in on the final day of these four days of fishing at Ross Barnett Reservoir, fourth stop of the year for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Elite Series. Tournament Dustin Connell leading right now by two and three quarters pound over Kevin Van Dam, who just sort of had a mini blow up right there. I should say a maxi blow up. That was a huge bass, the biggest bass we have seen today. Caught among the 12, five and a half pounds, and Kevin Van Dam, if he can repeat that one more time before time runs out, 
Oh man, we could be a statistical deadlock here. Who knows what happened? Jonathan Van Dam has got longer to fish than anyone because he's already made his way back to the area of the uh, of the weigh-in. That's why these elite series wins are so so precious because if if Dustin is able to hold these guys off, he knows that he held off Kevin Van Dam. You just go right on down the list. Oh. The guys that have been trying to get the lead from him the today. Win. The best in the business, for sure. Absolutely, all of them that come out here on the Bassmaster Elite Series are the world's best. Pleasure to watch him in action on Ross Barnett. Uh oh. <laughs> they got to check in it. Check, is it check in at two or check in at two fifteen? I, I know they want to start the they check, check in at two. Okay. Yeah, they check in at two. I think the weigh-in starts at two fifteen. Give them a few minutes to get their fish out and and have them up there ready to for Dave Mercer to weigh them in. But so we were thinking that we wouldn't have many guys fishing the last fifteen yeah. twenty minutes, but Jonathan has already made the move back close to the long site where we've seen a lot of fish caught in the first few days. Sure have. Why someone wouldn't duck into that marina for a few final flips, you know? It's, you never can tell what it's going to be like this time of day on this particular day of the tournament. It looks like Dustin Connell has made his way back and is right that big point just north of takeoff. He has made it there. No, a little tougher Still today. running, though. Yeah. Can't seem to get any big ones today. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, got a pretty good lake, to be honest with you. I was a little skeptical at first. <laughs> Thank you. Tom Oswald tweeted some knowledge about the getting hooked in the tongue. Said that the uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife did a uh, study and more than 50% of the fish that were hooked in the tongue or throat expired. expired. Yeah. Lots of blood vessels in the tongue. That's, you yeah. You think about those places on the human body that have so much, you know, the nose and so forth like that. You know. But they must bleed internally because you just don't see them. Or in my career, you just don't see the blood. But it's got to be that going mm. on because they, they die. They must bleed internally or yeah. go into That's where Connell is. Dustin's moved back close. I certainly don't blame him. Don't Better take a to chance. be safe than sorry. He, he's not quite at the weight that he right. said he felt like he definitely needed to secure a win today, but he's close enough not to be gambling and, and not get in. All right. <laughs> so no one else has signal? Not right now. Well, they're still up there? Get that, dude. I'm coming back. You know what I mean? I ain't staying up there. They don't know how rough that is. Get out there and break down. That ain't no good. At all. I did everything I could do, man. I mean, I don't, I don't know of anything else I could go do. Tough. <coughs> I'm really glad I had a, a lead. I don't, I don't know what I was gonna shake out, but I did everything I could to get catch a good bag. So, Tommy, you think he's made a smart move? Everything. Oh, I Coming think so. Early? Oh, I do. Yeah. Absolutely, I do. I mean, I ain't. I don't. If I if I if I don't win, I can't say I'd change a thing. 
I stuck with a game plan, you know. Stuck with the game plan and just kept fishing. I almost didn't do that. I was like, well, I, let me just go catch a limit. No, I need to catch a big one or two. And that's what I did. I caught one big one and a limit. One decent fish in there, like a 275. And then three more. I mean, that's just, and I had a five and a half pound lead. If someone comes back and just has a great day, and I don't, they deserve every bit of it. So guys, the fish in his live well, he's got the four and a half we saw on live. He just mentioned a two and three quarters, he says, and it's, it's registered as a two and a half. Okay. So if it's, if he weighed it and it's a two and three quarter, and then he's got three one pounders, one and change. So he's, I just want it to be over with. I'm, I'm, I'm. I want them to quit casting. I want them to quit casting, and I'm ready to weigh these fish. See how it shakes out, but I, I, I don't know. We're I've been on the water like 30 days in a row. So tired. I think I need to try to Dude, find Dude, I have fished so many days in a row. And then I guide while I'm at the house, which I love doing, but. It's left it all out there, man. Ain't nothing else I can do. Unless I get lucky and catch a seven pounder right now, and then I'd freak out and go way in, but. I don't know, man. I don't know. It doesn't look real rough right there. I didn't just hand it to him. You know what I mean? No, what do you mean? Like I didn't just go out there and catch five pounds and then have to go catch 13 or something to beat me or 10 or 12. I mean, I, I didn't hand it to him, so. A weather app I'm looking at says that the wind's like five. I'll just tell you this, I put more work into this tournament than I have any tournament. Any. I just get, if I, I feel like if I can pick and choose what tournaments that I'm gonna do good in. Toledo being, man, I'm gonna tell you right now. For for me, I don't I don't have I'm not making fifty, sixty, seventy grand off you know, sponsors and stuff like that. So for me, Toledo Bend was the longest drive of my life because I didn't get paid. And that right there lit a fire on the bee, son. I said, we'll be back. We went to the Classic, and I said, Ross Barnett, it's gonna be a good tournament for me. Long drive from Toledo. I didn't ever get dialed in or nothing. I didn't. I mean, I had no, I mean, I just survived that tournament. Some of them, you gotta do that. I mean, you go practice, you're not on a winning deal. That's just how it is, but here, on Monday when I went and practiced, I caught what I catch. I don't know, I caught like two five pounders and another four and I caught like a seven pounder. And I was like, dude, I had that weird feeling. I was like, this right here might be the deal. This is the deal, but it's just super tough up there today. And I, I don't have a lot of time. I mean, we're waiting in at two o'clock. I had to leave at one. So, I mean, it is what it is. Jonathan Van Dam. 
You'd think he might pick up a little something with that one right there. Not a bad one. Yep, I think he's going to come. I just didn't want to wait around Pretty up good there. Good one, actually. And uh, have something go wrong. You know, get out in the middle of the lake and something break. I mean, my grass tore off. It was flopping in the wind. Speaking of wind, good night. Huh? That's terrible, ain't it? This is one of the roughest lakes I've ever been on. I mean, I mean, really? Between the wind and then that storm last night and all that and not knowing what it was going to do up there where I was fishing. Run through your uh, fishing career and tell me what a wind would mean to you in this tournament series. I'll just put it this way. When I was, uh, I don't know, maybe... 12 years old, you know, my brother, we started fishing night tournaments on Lake Mitchell. And I remember we went down there and we got second one night. We won like 350 bucks. And then James handed me, you know, $150 or whatever it was. And I was like, dang, man, I work. I mean, you can get, you can win money fishing. And uh, then after that, you know, I kept fishing. I fished through college. I fished at Alabama and then had some success there. And, dude, I remember sitting here. It was my sophomore year of college. Like, I just almost quit because I knew, I knew. I was like, I want to do this. It's all I ever thought about, which I'm sure a lot of other fishermen. But And then when I got out of college, I fished and fished and fished around the house, had some success. And then I went and worked construction for about a year. And I got back and I said, when I got back, I said, I'm catching every bass I can. And I ended up winning that Southern Open on Alabama River. And that's the only reason I'm here today. That's it. If I wouldn't have won that tournament, you know, I wouldn't be here right now. That was, uh, we got 12 minutes. That was, uh, that's what helped me get right here. And then I fished the opens, qualified. You know, I was fortunate the first time I qualified. And now we're on the res, living the res life. Tired, sunburnt. Oh, it would mean the world to me. I mean, it, you're talking about a career builder. I mean, whether I win or I don't, I've had a great week. Uh, I don't, I don't know what I would do, man. I would be speechless. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't, I don't think I got it one. I don't. I think somebody got lucky and caught some frogfish. Maybe Keith. I don't, I don't know. I just feel like somebody pulled in the right pocket and caught some. I don't know though. I can't even imagine that. Well, Dustin Connell, obviously not, not knowing, no, no inside information about what else is going on with the other 11 anglers out there today. He does not know how close he stands to that trophy at the end of it all, a, a, a fast journey to the top of the bass fishing world when you think about it. And you think go. of all our anglers who come from the college yes. ranks who fish yes, bass in college, team bass fishing in college. And you gotta yes. think first, this yes. guy right here, Jordan Lee, yeah. the first one to break through, about it. win a tournament, and he did it the biggest way you possibly can. He wins the Bassmaster Classic, Lake Conroe, goes to Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas and relishes the moment on top of the bass fishing world. No question about that. The man who represents the sport for this coming year, coming out of the college series. Elite anglers who fished in the classic. Well, we can take a look at that list in just a moment right now. We had a few right there. Dustin Connell, Jordan Lee, Matt Lee, Brandon Card, 
Brock Mosley. These are not classic. These are who have fish, who fished there, where they came from. Brett Pruitt, John Hunter, Clint Davis, Alton Jr., James Elam. All 10 of these are fishing the Elite Series. Man. All of them are fishing the Elite Series. They have now. fished, yes. Yep, they're all current, all current Elite Series anglers that came from the college fishing ranks. Obviously, some anglers went to college, but these guys fished in college since its inception. So, that's Brandon it. Card, so much of him in this program. First one he's, to he's make the it. first one out, led the way, and here he is doing very well at this tournament here. Didn't quite make it to the top ten there. Brett Pruitt from Louisiana Monroe. He's won a national championship before, not not with bass, but he's won a college championship, and that's roughly. 10 out of 110, that's a good percentage for it being so new. Plenty of guys fishing the Bassmaster Elite Series who, uh, there was there was no college bass there fishing no, teams back it, in the day. You're exactly right, Tommy, and you hear so many young fishermen now talking about fishing tournaments when they were 12, 13, 14 years old started. I had that same story, but 20 couple years ago when I was telling that story, you didn't hear of kids starting at 12 or 13 years old. Now every young fisherman you talk to started fishing tournaments at 12, 13 years old. And that's, we're going to see more and more of this because guys are getting the fever at a very young age. And what's the most expand, what's the most expansive, dynamic, exploding segment among tournament bass fishing? It's high school now. Yep. It's absolutely high school. Yeah, I feel like I'm like two pounds short, dude. Yes! Yes! Welcome once to have your family there. Oh, this is That's awesome, what I'm man. About, baby. Hey, this is awesome. Quit. Big it. Talk about no smokes for a second. Well, uh, you know, my mom, she came and, uh, my dad and my brother. Let's see if we can get those sunglasses off those eyes. I think this is going to be yeah. really good to watch. Yeah. You got to represent for your for your sponsors, but uh, hey, you got to represent for yourself a little bit. Too. Yeah. I think I saw him watching. I got a lot of people here. that support me. A lot of people back home too. And I ain't only doing this just for myself. You know, my brother, a lot of guys around the house, big fishing community where I'm at, man. And there's some hammers there too, like really great fishermen. And, uh, you know, I want to win for them too. I think I'm short, man. I don't think I got enough. How about that sunrise this morning? That's something else. That was awesome, wasn't it? Yeah, it was almost like it was showing you the way. Do what? It was almost like it was showing you the way. You know, all those beams coming Yeah. Through. It was like, right here. <laughs> That's where the fish are, right here. That's crazy. It was something, man. I ain't seen that in a long time like that. Yeah, that was something. I'll remember that. It's so special for me, Tommy. It's been... 20 plus years ago, but I've I've had those same tears come down my cheeks. I, I certainly know what that was like the emotion. How special it is. That big fish? Yeah. Dude. Run through that start with the cat. I don't know why that fish. Like I fished that mat, I don't know, ten times this week. And I ain't had a bite in it. Pull up, flipped on the backside. It went, just stopped. 
set the hook, come up flopping back there, and 99% of the time that comes off, every time. That fish somehow got stayed hooked and it was sitting there flopping. When I got my hands on it, I went, that's what I needed right there. I don't think I got enough, man. You caught a good one every day, didn't you? I have. I've had one or two big fish every day, that size. We'll just see how it shakes out, man. I don't think I got it. I just don't think so. God, I don't want second place, dude. Oh, I don't want second. It's worth noting, college trend, we just talked about it. We just had the biggest high school or the biggest Bassmaster event in history, 350 boats, high school series at Chickamauga. It's growing every day. 350 boats. Do what? I enjoyed filming you fishing. Oh, yeah, I enjoyed it, man. You're, you're good on camera. You did a good job. Yeah, yeah I enjoyed clear. it. Dustin man, Connell I just keeps saying it again and again. He doesn't it, think man. he has this one. I, I, I don't know if that's a little reverse psychology. Like Say that enough and maybe it'll come true, but he may genuinely think that someone else has caught him. And this last hour, someone else has caught him. It's caught one. That's probably one of the guys he's thinking about that he might not have quite enough. Yeah. Yeah. I needed one more, dude. I needed one more three pounder. It's hard to beat these guys, isn't it? It's very hard. I don't think I did it. You got one of the biggest killers on the tour right behind you today. I know. He's, he's probably got a giant bag. I mean, it is what it is. If he if he wins, it is what it is. I mean, I just, I mean, he's King Kong, there ain't no doubt. But, dude, I did everything I could do today. I did not change anything. I stayed with it. Caught me a limit. I said, if I can catch a limit in one of those big ones, then I can win. But I don't know why. I just feel like I, don't, I just feel like somebody out here caught 19 pounds, 18 pounds, 17 pounds, and beat me. I don't. I don't know why I feel that way. We'll see. You know what I mean? I do. Like all day. Dude, all week, man. I've practiced Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's seventh day on this lake. I mean, I... We're going to see how it shakes out now. I don't know why I'm so shook up, dude.
Doesn't know why he's so shook up. I tell you what, don't miss this weigh-in. I don't know what I call. I, I the call dam one may break. Like the dam will break. On our, when the inevitable happens there, Dustin Connell, he said it. I, I didn't leave anything on the table. I gave it everything I've got. We're going to find out what the result is. Just a few minutes on Bassmaster.com. The weigh-in starts in less than 15 minutes. Thanks to all y'all for joining us here on Championship Monday. Hey, a big thanks to all our camera guys out there. It has been windy, rough, 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 and they've had an extra day to spend down there in Mississippi, and they have done outstanding work. Just great Go stuff from everyone, all the crew, <laughs> all the marshals, everyone else, the, the Bassmaster.com crew, the tournament crew. Thanks to all of them for just making a marvelous effort here at the fourth stop of the year in the Bassmaster <laughs> yeah. Elite Series. So much fun, and Davey, Bam. man, this is a good final day. This is as good as it gets. I love those emotions. It's just unbelievable, Tommy. And I want to thank you, Suits, Ronnie, the folks in the truck, yes. birthday boy, yes. for, for having me. <laughs> and, and it's a pleasure Whoa. to be able to watch a tournament like That's this and a I'm young about, angler baby. get his first win. Absolutely. Hey, say quick. again, do not miss this weigh-in that's coming up 3.15 Eastern time on Bassmaster.com. We'll see you next time. Bacon. Yes. That's why I keep doing this. Yes.